Son mis amigos, son mis amigos Augusto. Le digo así, yo lo vengo aquí a ponerme al día a apuntar y pues, le digo así. ready brother Carranza amen all right brother Carranza there's some music playing in the background okay the, yes I, I, I got that are right, we ready everybody all right we want to welcome you to the Sunday law update and we want to update you on where we are in Bible prophecy as they are fulfilling every week in the book of Revelation and this week we're going to be talking about the earth Sabbath movement is calling for a slow Sunday for the next two months we want the whole world to keep a slow Sunday for the next two months before we have prayer, Brother uh, Marcus Mason, what do you want to say about that? I mean... Your mic is not on. Okay. When, when I think about all the different things, we were talking earlier, and as I think about all the things that they're doing, I realize this is not man's doing. Right. What's really happening is Satan is working through men. They don't even understand what's really happening. All of these things, like they're... they're they're now trying to set people up to get them used to keeping a Sabbath. Right. Or, or, or reverencing a day. Right. So it just shows me that the more, as we move forward, we need to keep our eyes open. Yes, indeed. And these movements. All right. And, you know, because of that, let us get started with a word of prayer as we get ready to go into this update. Father in heaven, we come before you in prayer. In the mighty and precious name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, we want to ask for your forgiveness of sins, and we want to pray that you will send the early and latter rain to us, Lord. We want to pray that you would bless us to this end, we pray in Jesus' name. Amen and amen. amen. As we go to, uh, before we go to the screen, we want to let everybody know, we want to make a public service announcement. Um, brothers and sisters, we have... Um, very, very, very few months before this thing comes. Am I right, my brother? We're right. You're right. Yes, and as we go to the screen, but brother Richard, let's go to the screen. As we look at the screen here, you know, as you see here, you know, there are political entities that want a new world order. Mm -hmm. we, we know that. Mm -hmm. We know that. And they want to bring everything together. And brothers and sisters, only a few are going to stand. Mercy. What do you want to say about that, I, Elder? That, when I hear that only a few are going to make it, or only a few are going to stand, it just it echoes in my mind there are so many people in this world that are going by the name Seventh-day Adventist, mm -hmm. who are listening to the Sunday Law Update, yes. that are hearing the news and the information, but aren't following it, aren't doing something to prepare for it. Right. And when the, the pressure comes from, what you're, from this law that's going to come, they will not be prepared. And it makes me, just makes me nervous as to why would we let this happen? Why would right. we not get ready? And as you see this picture here, you see the church is going to be sifted. Sifted, mercy. It's going to be sifted. This Sunday law crisis is going to sift the seven-day Adventist church. What do you want to say about that? 
we were just talking about this this morning, about there has to be a sifting in God's church. Right. Because God is only going to deal with those that are prepared. Mm -hmm. Only those who are wheat. Only those who are following him in obedience. We're talking about how we, the only way we honor the Lord is through obedience. Mm -hmm. And so he says, I, I cannot afford to let heaven be at stake again. So I've got to sift mm -hmm. my people so that the only ones that are left are those that are ready. That's right, because we know that the Sunday law, as you are very familiar with this, mm. will be the test. Amen. And so we're preparing for that test every single day. Would you, would you agree with I that? I agree with that. And so today I was really thinking about, you know, this thing is serious because we know it's not just going to be the agitation for a Sunday law. Mm -hmm. But when spiritualism, as you see in this mm -hmm. picture, gets yes. involved, yes. when I was thinking the other day, and maybe it was yesterday, um, how, as Ellen G. White makes it very plain in the spirit of prophecy, that those who will stand in this time of peril must understand the testimony of the scriptures concerning the nature of man mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. the state of the dead. For in the near future, many will be confronted by the spirits of devils, mm. personating beloved relatives or friends. Mm. I'm thinking, you know, when the devil comes mm -hmm. as my mother, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And I'm sure the devil will personate your father. Oh, absolutely. It's absolutely. gonna look like brother, it's gonna look like him. Mm -hmm. It's gonna sound like him. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. It's gonna it's gonna be a perfect it's counterfeit. Like, oh. mm -hmm. And I was saying, Lord, how in the world am I prepared for that? Mm -hmm. As Sister White says, will we will God's people yield to the evidence of their senses? And mm -hmm. see, sad to say, it's gonna be those spirits that are gonna tell everybody. Mm -hmm to close on Sunday. That's right. And so it's not just going to be the agitation by man. It's going to be the satanic agitation by these spirits mm -hmm. to where one day we'll live in a new America to where everything will be closed on Sunday. Um, no mark, no sale. No sale. Is, is mm. this serious, brother? That's serious. Exactly. And now they got billboards out talking about Sunday worship. Sunday worship is biblical. Have mercy. <laughs> And, and they putting out that great cities attract great leaders, talking about the Pope and stuff. You know, it's all going to lead to Sunday worship. And brothers and sisters, we're going to show you some things that are going to lead people to the worship of the man of sin. Mm. Do you understand this? And this is one, I think, the, the, the former prime minister of Kenya. And brothers and sisters, we have a work to do. Do, do you agree with that, church? Amen. The spirit of prophecy says in the very time in which we live, the Lord has called his people and has given them a message to bear. He has called them. You know, we're called to do this. That's Apocalypse right. ministry has been called That's right. to expose the wickedness of the man of sin mm. who has made the Sunday law a distinctive power. The perils of the last days are upon us and in our work. We are to warn the people of the danger that they are in. For every uh, time you come up and mm -hmm. preach mm -hmm. on your channel, it's giving the warning. Yes. How important it is that people get this last warning. It, it is so important because no one who is lost will be able to say I'm lost because I didn't know. Right. So that means every person on the planet will come across the truth from somebody. And so we need to know or realize that we are part of this work in helping somebody to realize you're in danger. Amen. You don't know what kind of danger you're in. And so we have to be a part of it. It's so important because if someone is going down and they realize you knew, right? but you didn't tell them, you didn't warn them to say, listen, you're in yes, the wrong exactly. spot, get out of there. They will want to know, I thought we were closer than that. Why would you not tell me? And the, and, and, and the Bible lets us know that if we don't tell them, right. they may be lost, but their blood will be, will on, be our hand. on our hands. And we don't want that. And, don't what, want that. and that's right. And what's deep about this is, Sister White says, let not the solemn scenes which prophecy has mm -hmm. revealed be left untouched. Now, what does that mean, let it not be untouched? That means we have to seek to know what we don't know. Right. We've got to study. Right. 
So if, if, the, if, the, if the responsibility has been placed on us to warn somebody, how can you warn them of something you don't understand? And so the Lord's like, I've set you up so that I can give you all understanding that if you would study, you would have all of the answers to give someone else to help them get prepared. But if we don't know the truth, we can't give somebody something we don't have. And, you know, um, just recently, um, uh, you know, there's been some ac accusations about Seven Day Adventists being anti-Catholic. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. But, and we need to tone our message down, but this is not the time to tone our message. No. There's an article from Catholic Answers from 2004, mm -hmm. and this is what the, this Catholic said. Seven-day Adventism cannot change its views on the Catholic Church being the whore of Babylon without admitting that it was wrong on Sunday worship. <sighs> Did you hear that? Man, and that's, this is what they say. This is what they say. Number two, it cannot admit that Sunday worship is not the mark of the beast without changing its views on the Jewish Sabbath. So they, they, they have figured it out. They figured they know. And last but not least, Seven-day Adventism cannot cease to be anti-Catholic without ceasing to be seven-day oh, Adventism. No, wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute. They're saying... Go ahead. They're saying that we cannot cease to be anti-Catholic without ceasing to be seven-day Adventist. So to be a seven-day Adventist, they are saying... Yeah. You have to be anti-Catholic. But here's the thing. We're not anti-Catholic. Not at all. We're anti-world, anti-Satan, anti-apostasy. Right. Am I right? Anti-beast. Anti-beast. But what happens is it will be looked upon as anti-Catholicism. Mm -hmm. Am I right? And so, you know, what, what we have to do to warn the people through these billboards, we have, our, our days are numbered. Do you understand this? Mm. And see, the Sunday law solution is going to be the solution that's going to bring it all together. That's right. That's right. And it's going to make a lot of sense. Look what Ellen G. White says in The Spirit of Prophecy. This is called Climate Calamities Blamed on Sunday Breaking. Mercy. Sister White says that they will point to the calamities on land and on sea, to the winds. And what's that next word? Floods. Floods. The earthquakes and the destructions by fire as, God, as judgments. Listen to this right here. Indicating God's displeasure because Sunday is not sacredly observed. Do you know that they're going to blame all these calamities and they're going to say that, and the only way we can escape this mm -hmm. is if we get everybody to pass a Sunday law. And it almost happened in 1888. Look at this right here. This is from New York Times. 1888, stop work on Sunday. I am, let me tell you this. I am Sister Cologne. I, I would not be surprised if something like this would come out again this year. Mm, I, wouldn't be surprised. I, I wouldn't be surprised. Nope. Blair wants the Lord's Day to be strictly observed, and you know what's going to happen. All the nations are going to come together to enforce Sunday laws. And then the final warning is if you go along with it, you will receive the seven last plagues. And, of course, people will burn in the lake of fire. Is that what the Lord said? Yes. Yes. Mm -hmm. And so through this Laudato Si document to where the Pope is calling for the whole world to repent and come together for its abuses, brothers and sisters, let me tell you this. The Pope calls on humanity to repent for its abuse on Mother Earth. And in Laudato Si, he talks about ecological conversion in chapter six. And in Laudato Si, he speaks to every person living on this earth. In Laudato Si, he talks about, we gotta come together for a common project. Mm -hmm. In Laudato Si, the Pope is saying that there is a need of a true world political authority mm -hmm. and one to manage. And Pastor Davis, what do you wanna say about that? Yeah, so everything is lining up just like prophecy said it would. Mm -hmm. uh, Revelation 13 tells us that all the world would wonder after the beast when that daily wound would be healed. And so uh, things are set in place. Uh, we know that the Pope's agenda pretty much is to have Sunday legislation enforced throughout the entire world and also to uh, revive this papal system to be uh, the world... Uh, the um, as the Bible says in Revelation chapter 17, that the uh, that uh, head, the beast, that it will be the eighth, and it will go into a perdition. So that tells us that there will be a revival of the papal system. Yes. And so, you know, in this, 
right here, and you, you gotta you have to really look very carefully of what they be saying, mm -hmm. you know. Mm -hmm. And this is gonna take us to this climate change thing because the Pope wrote this for the purpose of tackling climate change. Mm -hmm. And um, I wanna, um, let's go back to the screen, Brother Richard. In Laudato Si chapter six on the number three, it, calls, it has a thing on ecological conversion. And according to their sources, ecological conversion also means we're dealing with time differently both as an individual and as a society. We need to rediscover, listen to this right here, the rhythm of time, the alternation between work and rest with Sunday as the commonly shared weekly day of rest. So the Sister White says that the papacy has made the Sunday law a distinctive power. The papacy wants world communion and he wants everybody worshiping on his day. So in the end, this thing on trying to save the planet, it's going to be a catalyst mm. to bring it on. And what's going to happen between the wall of separation of church and state? Completely it's going to be broken. Yeah. Exactly. And, and, I, and I have a um, copy of the Constitution. <coughs> I'm going to bring it one day. And then the Jesuit plan for infiltration mm. will be over. This is uh, where the Jesuits, this article right here admitted that what we've been talking about for so many years is true about Jesuit infiltration. When you have a Supreme Court that is completely stacked in favor of the Pope, brothers and sisters, and when in the not so distant future, Satan will deceive many by impersonating Jesus and promoting a Sunday law. When Satan comes and impersonates, then the whole world is going to rest on Sunday. Are we ready for that? We're not ready for that. Why do you say we're not ready for that? Well, what you said earlier about uh, uh, spiritualism. This, that, that's, that, will be, that will be, to me, the crowning act of spiritualism. Mm. Satan comes to personate Christ. Right. He brings heathen deities with him. Mm. Right. They're talking in, 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 with melodic tones, and mm. we're yeah. seeing things we've never seen, and they are speaking, which feels like power, and everybody right. is bowing down. Everybody's Everybody bowing says, down. this is it. And you're the only one on the sideline going, nah, that's mm. not it. Mm. Yeah. And I said, we're, we're not ready, because even though we may go... That's not it. Mm -hmm. We're not prepared to stand against the onslaught of it. The whole world going, that is it. Exactly. You're the one that's wrong. And so, and with mm -hmm. the social credit for individuals and social credit for corporations, everything is in place where you can't mm -hmm. buy or sell. Mm -hmm. And so everything is, we are under, let me just say this to you. Mm -hmm. When they say Brick Brother's watching you, Big Brother's watching Big Brother you. really is watching you. Okay, hi. And Little Brother too, which is everything, AI, everything do you understand this right here and it's all everything that we're going to show you today is playing right into the hands of the pope's laudato si agenda and this is very deep and the while the whole world and what's going to happen is the whole world i mean somewhere near in the near future and we want to tell you something that just took place it's it's been two weeks since we've done this and since in the last two weeks i've had so much stuff to share with you that i see your hand I have so much stuff to share with you that it's going to blow your mind. The whole world is getting ready to go to Rome, and that little remnant, the seven day of in the church, are going to be the only ones. And brothers and sisters, a universal day of rest is being proposed right now. And brothers and sisters, the Pope is ingratiating himself into human affairs, and what is getting ready to happen? The whole world is going to be deceived mm. into receiving the mark of the beast brothers and sisters listen to this ellen g white says when the angel of mercy folds her wings and departs satan will do the evil deeds he has long wished to do storms and tempests war and bloodshed and these things he delights and thus he gathers in his harvest and so completely will men be deceived by him that they will declare that these calamities are the result of the desecration of the first day of the week from the pulpits of the popular churches will be heard the statement that the world is being punished. Not just America, but the world. And we're going to show you a calamity that just happened in a place where it should not have happened. Mm -hmm. It was a flood in Dubai. We talked about that this morning. You talked Mercy. about this morning. Oh, we're going to show you Mercy. what Satan is doing. Mm -hmm. It says that the world is being punished because Sunday is not honored as it should be, mm -hmm. and all the world's going to come together. And you know what Ellen G. White talks about? I, I haven't read this in a long time, but let me just read to you what Sister White says. 
the whole world's going to be convinced that we all need to come to church on one day, mm -hmm. right. Sunday. Mm -hmm. And then, of course, the time of trouble. Didn't she say it's going to be an overwhelming surprise? Yes. Yes, she, yes, she said it'll be an overwhelming surprise. It's when she says overwhelming surprise, what do you think that means? Well, we know what the, we know what the word overwhelm means. Right. right. It means that you feel completely... Uh, I under like something is bigger than you you don't know what to do you don't have an answer for it see, you know. it's going to come as an overwhelming surprise. surprise so it's something will catch you completely off guard right and you won't have an answer for it right she says the time of trouble was upon us i saw our people in great distress weeping and praying do you understand that this could happen this year mm -hmm. am i right brother cologne and where ready or not here it comes right mm -hmm. i saw our people in great distress weeping and praying and pleading the sure promises of god while the wicked were all around us mocking us and threatening to destroy us mm. they ridiculed our feebleness they mocked at the smallness of our numbers that tells you how many people are not going to receive right. the mark that's when people i tell you how many people are going to receive the mark of the beast wow. it's going to be just it's going to be like everybody receiving it mm. Mm. smallness of smallness of our numbers that's a big shake. That's exactly. And taunted us with words calculated to cut deep. They charged us with taking an independent position from all the rest of the world. How could they say that unless the whole world was on board? Mm -hmm. I don't think we realize what it means the whole world was well, on board. Yeah. They had cut off our resources so that we could not buy or what? Sell. How would they do that today? They can cut off your ability to use your cell phone. Mm-hmm. Am I right? That's right? They can cut off your ability to use your cards. That's what I'm saying. Shut your cards. Right? They will shut your cards down. Am I right? Mm -hmm. It says, and they referred to our abject poverty and stricken condition. They could not see how we could live without the world. We were dependent on the world. And we must concede to us customs, practices, and laws of the world or go out from it. Mm. Do you hear that? Mm -hmm. If we were the only people in the world whom the Lord favored, the appearances were awfully against us. Mm. Now, we have 8 billion people on this earth. Just give me a number. How, if, if, the, if we were the only people in the world whom the Lord favored, would, would she be talking about 5 billion people? Mm. No, because it's not. What about, how about 2 billion? Don't have that. How about a billion? Don't have that. Now, if, if you got 7 billion people receiving the mark of the beast and 1 billion not, that's, that's a big difference. That's a big difference. Mm -hmm. We're not even close. Could it, could it really be 144,000? Could it really be 100? If it was, say if it was 144,000 for real, and we found out it was really 144,000 people scattered all over the world that was faithful. Man, that would scare the life out of you. I went down. But think about it. As it was in the days of Noah, how many people were outside the ark? Men, men having hundreds of kids for 900, it may have been as many people on the, it has been said. It's been said. That there has been, there was as many people on the earth then, then as it is now. Right now. Mm. And only eight went on the ark. So maybe, Sister, but Sister Bob, and I see your hand, the 144,000 may be exactly what we have been saying it is. The mm. appearances were awfully against us, but I'm not over yet. It's not over. They declare that they had the truth, that miracles were among them, that angels from heaven talked with them. Who are those angels? Demons. Demons. Yes. And walked with them, and great power, signs, and wonders were performed among them. And that this was the temporal millennium that they had been expecting so long. That's right. And she says the whole, they said the whole world. What the, okay, understand this. The whole world was converted. Sister um, Bob, you're from Guyana. All of Guyana was converted. Brother, Sister Colonge, you're from Haiti. All of Haiti was converted. She says the whole world was converted, right? Can you imagine every Haitian except for a few? Mm. Brother Palmer, all the coast, all of Costa Rica was converted. My mother's country, all of Honduras. Let's just get to America. Sister Keller, all of Mississippi. Man, can you believe that? You're from California, brother? All, all of California was converted and in harmony with the Sunday law. Mm, mm, mm. Whew. What do you think about this, Pastor? Man. You can take it off the screen, I, Brother Richard. I, I, I wonder if there are words adequate enough to open our eyes to really understand those kinds of statements. Hmm. 
when it says the whole world was converted. Was converted. And we will boast 20 something million seven days. I know. Mm. And every single seven day event is, is not even it's trying not even to be true. Right. Just be honest. Mm. It, I, I once heard a, a sermon or a presentation given that said if we baptized 100,000 seven day Adventists a day, I, I once, in 50 years, we'd still be way behind. And it was just to show that the numbers we have are small. We don't have enough to even finish the work. So when you turn it on its flip side and you look at there's a small group. First of all, if every Seventh-day Adventist could be counted, that would be extremely small. So those who are really being true is even smaller. Because she said not one in 20. Not one in 20. So take that. Let's, 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 do, let's do that. Let's do one, not one in 20. Mm. So one twentieth. Of one divided by twenty, hypothetically, just we just use her numbers. That's five percent. So you got twenty-two million seven-day events on the books, and out of that twenty-two million, five percent are converted. That's only one point one million that are really standing faithful. Man, mm. <laughs> one million. Wow. One million SDAs and. Eight billion people received the mark of the be received the mark of the beast. Oh man, that's serious. That's the whole world mm. standing against you. Now, 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 now to, to tackle that. Go ahead. This one million are scattered around. Yeah. They're not even all together. Yeah. That's so right. So you got some here, some there, some there, and the rest of the world is in between. And yeah. you got to stand by yourself. By yourself. That's still a drop in the bucket. That's a drop. That's still, in the still a drop in the bucket. Wow. Do you understand? Let's go back to the screen because when Sister White says the whole world was converted and in harmony with the Sunday law, mm. Brother Cologne, you're from Haiti. Imagine you call Haiti and you're, they said, everybody's doing it. You're right, the pain. Not one person from your family. Right. Brother, um, Brother David, all of Suriname was converted. You call your friends and the friends of the standing faithful say, brother, everybody. Now, you know, you know people say everybody in a, in a hyperbole sense. Right. They say, brother, do not come to Suriname. Everybody's doing it. Mm -hmm. Man, that's scary. Mm -hmm. Brother, da Brother David, you from North Carolina. Right. Everybody with the school would, would go along with it. Mm. But watch this. And this little feeble people stood out and she says, didn't say feeble people, little feeble. What does little feeble? Can you um, give her that microphone? What does little feeble imply? Small. It's very small. This little feeble people stood out in defiance of the laws of the land <laughs> and mm. not just the law of the land and the law of God and claimed to be the only right ones on the earth. Sister, um, Bob, go ahead. Isn't it the same thing that was happening with the pandemic? Everybody's taking the yes, and 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 few uh, refused to take it, and they were the the, the, the take it off the that, screen, Richard. The ones that were causing problems, and they had to punish those by taking away their jobs, yes, and whatever. But what I wanted to tell you before, do you know they're putting spywares on your phone? I saw this sure. new thing on my phone, and I'm wondering what on earth is this? And wow. I'm trying to move it and can't move. So I just press on it, and I said, why are you spying on me? Why are you yeah. listening to my conversation? You know, and I, I'm <laughs> typing it in, and the person said, type back right away, type back. We were just trying to keep things in order, you know, and see that we can help yeah. you to get to whoever you got, need to get to in, in a short space of time. And we had like three or four different conversations. So I tell them, please do not, I don't appreciate it. Take this thing off of my phone. Mm. Yeah. And then, fi finally, the person type back and says, you need to speak to your carrier because wow. it is, we didn't put the spyware on your phone. Probably your carrier did it. You know? We have to bring you on the next Sunday little update. <laughs> Mercy. <laughs> they got spyware on our cell phones. We I really in trouble. It. I believe it. Now, now, Sister Bob says something. You can come back to Pastor Davis. 
Sister Bob said something very, very important, and I see that you have a hand up, right? Yeah, he had. Yeah, Man, can, can you be the pastor? Can somebody be the pastor of the mic? Can I show? Can I? Can I? I have an article right here. Let's go to the screen. Now, if a person took the coronavirus vaccine, that's their personal choice. It says tracking coronavirus vaccines around the world. More than 5.5 billion people worldwide received a dose of the COVID-19 vaccine, equal to about 72.3% of the world's population. Really? Mm -hmm. Did you hear that? That's more than half. Do you know that two, that means only two billion, still, billions is still a lot, a lot of people, but the majority of planet Earth took the jab. Mm -hmm. That's their choice now. Right. And look at this right here. And vaccinations by country. I mean, I'm not gonna get into this right here, but look at this right here. I'm gonna show you what I found out. The total number of people, look, 12.7 billion shots given. Somebody made some money. Mm. The CDC says, how many people took it in, um, in the United States? 81.4% of the United States population, according to the CDC, wow. took the COVID vaccine, 81 percent, 81. You can take it off the screen. They, they, and they achieve that through TV, yeah, through media, through That's serious. message over and over and, and over and over, and only threatened with a job. Man, and, and they got 84 percent, mm. 81. 81 percent. That's serious. That's a big number. That's a big number. That's a big number. They, they didn't have, but they didn't have to threaten nobody's life. The, mm. All they did was keep pushing a message, keep pushing a right. message, keep pushing a message, and then hey, you won't be able to work. And more. Than that. But and you notice how they started ahead. out. They was like, if you get it, right. you know, uh, hey, we'll give you a free donut. They sure did. Hey, yeah, we'll give right. you a free burger and sure some did. fries. That's right. You know, you, you had the yeah, yeah. you had the governor of New York, the former one. Mm -hmm. He was eating a burger and some fries. Yeah. Like, mm, you can have this. All you gotta do is go get it. Wow. But then they transition from that to more forceful measures, yes. like right, do this or you will lose this. That's right, right, man. They stepped. So down. you're seeing mm. how the Sunday law was played out. Now there was no death decree. There was no death decree. There was. Technically, well, in a certain sense, but there was no complete buy, no buy, no sell. Mm -hmm. So if 81% of the people took the jab, do, we, do you want me to find out how many people in your country took it? Can, can I find out? Okay. Now, we, we're going we're gonna to do a thing. Now, brother, brother uh, Chad, go ahead. Say what you want to say, my brother. Well, I think that the Lord is really doing it because what you brothers and elders were, were going over exactly things. It's exactly how we were told. What were they going to do? Please do it. Here's an incentive to do it. Right. Here's a threatening to do it. Mm -hmm. And we also forget, and forgive me for, for saying it this way, but I'm going to be very much. We here at all people, and I, I use that very loosely, should understand that it's not just a decree that's going to happen. It's the fact of, oh, you didn't take it. Oh, you're a certain color. You're a Mm -hmm. I'm not going to allow, I, I'm not going to take your money. I'm not going to allow you to do these mm -hmm. things. I'm not going to, I'm not going to take you for a ride. I'm not going to pick you up. I'm not going to let you buy something. Mm -hmm. All these controls are how Satan works. And we've been told this is how. So why is it such a surprise for us? Mm -hmm. It shouldn't be. History repeats itself. Right. We are experiencing the same thing just on a grander scale. Mm -hmm. That's right. Mm -hmm. Let's go back to the screen now for Brother Cologne and Sister Cologne. Now, this is what I found. Despite efforts to make COVID-19 vaccine available and free to all more than a year after the first doses arrived, Haiti still registers one of the lowest vaccination coverages rates in the world. Mm. So they didn't take it. But if you type up, let's look up Suriname. Let's look up Guyana, all right? Uh-oh, watch this right here. Watch this. Man, how many people are in Guyana? They administered at least one million doses of COVID vaccine so far. 
That's deep. Brothers and sisters, I mean, we can go mm-hmm. to each country. It, sees, it talks about Guyana. We can go to Guyana, and then we can go to Dutch Guyana, which is Suriname. <laughs> Let's see how, how much, how much, how many, how many, how many got it in Guyana? All right. Okay. Well, it doesn't say, okay. Still alive. That's enough to, okay. Assuming that every person need two does, that's enough to evacuate about 64.8% of the country. Hmm. That's more than half, brother. Well, how does that make you feel, brother uh, Mason? That's, that's serious. Yeah. You can take it off the screen. We can go to Suriname. We can go to your country, Nicaragua. We can go to Bolivia. You can take it off the screen, brother Richard. And um, so, Sister, Sister Mason, we just found out that on average, 64% of the population in your husband's country took the, took the jab. The point we're making is, with the little pressure, they did this. Just imagine when you can't buy, you can't sell, people are seeing demons in human form telling them that you need to go along with this, and if anybody tells you don't go along with Sunday, they're the devil. Mm-hmm. Brothers and sisters, how many, what, what percentage of the world would you think would receive the mark of the beast? Be honest. Man. Maybe 90%, probably, right? Yeah, probably worse than the, uh, yeah, the COVID. 90 plus. 90 plus. We, we could say 90 plus of the world will receive the mark of the beast. Yeah. Now, let's talk about America. How many would do it in America? Almost everybody except the remnant, am I right? Mm. Now, what happens is this, this is serious. Now, we're about to show you what happened in Dubai. Now, we were told in the spirit of prophecy that they would blame all these calamities on Sunday breaking, am I right, somebody? Mm-hmm. Right. Now, remember when Jesus said that earthquakes would happen in diverse places? And let's go to the screen. We're going to show you what happened in Dubai. What makes Dubai, what makes this so bad is that it never really rains in Dubai. Mm. Never. That's like somebody saying that it, it was a blizzard in Jamaica. Mm-hmm. Mm. You never get, it never had blizzards in Jamaica. That's like somebody saying it was a blizzard in Haiti. It just doesn't do it. Now, Brother Colange, is it, snow, is it ever snow in Haiti? Does it ever snow in Haiti? Have you ever had a blizzard in Haiti? Was it a snowstorm? Have you ever had five feet of snow in Haiti? Never. Never. You, you're laughing because, you know, this, brothers and sisters, look what happened in Dubai. Watch this. Oh, my God. Look at all that. Look at that. Look at what happened. Man, this isn't. This was happened just this week. Just this week? Dubai, Dubai was submerged in floods. Look at this. Wow. Look at all that. Mm. Instant rain brings Dubai to a halt. Remember when Ellen White said that the floods would happen, and they would say that the reason why Dubai left underwater. Mm. Mercy. Look at that. Look at that. Look at that. One point five years of rain in there in a few hours. They said nearly two years worth of rain fell in a few hours. Look at that right there. Biggest flood since 1999 reports. This is in, this is not in Miami. Now, this was Miami, Florida. Oh, yeah, we we would, we we would, yeah, okay, we know that. Right. If it happened, but look at this. Rain continues to disrupt lives of people. Look, even the planes cannot get, look at that plane. It couldn't even get off. It, it causes huge destruction. Wow. See, the devil will get Dubai to keep Sunday. Mm-hmm. Rains, floods, airports, shopping malls. Look at this right here. Shoppers shocked as ceilings leak. Look at that. Mm-hmm. Oh, I see you, my sister. Look at that. Wow. Roads turning into flowing rivers. This is in Dubai, y'all. It's, this is, hold on, isn't that the desert? In the desert. Now, they did need some rain, but, <laughs> but man, not that much, right? Cars are being seen swept away. Look at that. They are st- it, wow, look at that. This is in Dubai, y'all. We're the world's busiest airport. Look at that. The world's busiest airport. Man, you cannot fly. It was flooded. Look at that. You know you can't, you can't get enough speed to get up into the air. 
severe flooding swamps airplanes. And that could be a very uncomfortable place to be in as an Arab. Ankle deep water at the metro station. Now you can just imagine. Look at that. That's a rich place. Schools across Dubai closed. And guess what? I was supposed to go. I was supposed to go to Dubai this month. Mm. Just imagine how I went to Dubai. Mm. I had a story to tell you, right? <laughs> <laughs> a red alert issue. Look at that. Look at that. Wow. Monique, I see you. Heavy rain batters some Gulf states. Look at that. Wow. Look at that. Mm. Marine Oman hit too. Look at that. Wow. Flash floods in neighboring Oman. Look at that. Do you think that the climate change thing can get their attention? Can you think that the climate change thing can get their attention? Mm -hmm. Look at this right here. It turns streets into rivers. Understand, if you've been to a desert before, brothers and sisters, dramatic people are people wadding. Now, you got a lot of Americans over there. That's why you see a lot of American-looking people over there through the flood were to go viral. Look at this right here. Mm. Was Ellen G. White right? Absolutely. Then she, she prophesied that all these floods would happen. All this stuff. They don't know what, are they prepared for? You could take, hey, brother, um, Richard, you could take it off the screen. Do you think they were prepared for that? Absolutely not. Do you think they were prepared for that? The, 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 mm -hmm. I, I, I can just imagine that the thought process in Dubai is we are safe. Mm. We are good. A lot of money here, solid buildings, yeah. the construction is good. We have everything we yeah. need. We're living above the rest of the world. We are good. Yeah, totally and, then, good. and then this comes and just shuts them down. Water. Mm -hmm. Not war, water. water. Yeah. It shuts them down. Mm. Now, in a place like that, my thought is, if that kept happening, what would the rich people say? Now, we need to figure out yeah. how to stop this. Mm -hmm. Something's got to happen. We got to figure out. And if, when they figure out, you know what? Climate change. It's climate change. Oh, yeah. And the only answer that seems plausible is we need to give the earth a rest. Mm -hmm. And the only people who keep saying no. Is them seven-day events. Them seven-day events keep saying no, that, that's not the answer. That's not the answer. So this is not a coincidence that this is happening like mm -hmm. this, especially since, uh, th as we've been seeing throughout the Sunday Law updates we've been doing, yep. that they've been talking about climate change. Constantly, right. you know, we need to have a, a day of rest for climate change. Mm -hmm. They kept pushing this thing. Mm -hmm. And then you see Satan working yeah. with the floods and different things right. and unsuspected places mm -hmm. to, to put some force behind that. Mercy. Exactly. Mm -hmm. Sister Monique, I saw your hand. Do you have a microphone? Yeah, I just sent you a video. I don't know if you can play it, but um, I don't know when it happened, but they were creating artificial rain in Dubai. Yeah, um, but they... Oh, hold they on. but what? shooting... Uh, Seeds, right? Yeah, into the clouds. Watch. Let's go to the screen. Just to answer that, let's go to the screen, Brother Richard. No, they said it's not. <laughs> what caused Dubai floods? Yeah. Experts cite climate change, not cloud seeding. Whether it was cloud seeding or not, understand this. Satan is exercising his power. He's using it. Do you understand this? That's deep. I see the other hands. Let's go to NBC News. Have you heard of NBC News before? Mm -hmm. All right, let's go to this. The scenes in Soak Dubai tonight look apocalyptic. Roads turned into rivers, trees barely still standing as wind sends debris flying. The tarmac flooded at Dubai International Airport, the second busiest in the world. Imagine being a passenger on this plane, battling rising waters, seeing this out your window. For hours, flights were halted as stranded passengers piled up. Tonight, Dubai Airport telling passengers, don't show up unless you've confirmed your flight's still leaving. There are hundreds and thousands of other passengers just like me in this airport who have been waiting for 10 hours, 16 hours. In 24 hours, Dubai drenched with... Oh, he's not flying out. More rain than the city usually gets in nearly two years, shattering records in a desert metropolis known for being hot and dry. Since the UAE started keeping track of rainfall in 1949, it's never seen anything like this. So this is not a time lapse. Real. I've never seen this much lightning in my life before. This is crazy. The extreme rainfall disrupting life across the region. Private schools closed and government workers sent home, with many roads impassable. 
A cat clinging to a car in water as high as the head. That look like my cat. That look like Spotty right there. I have a cat. I have a, I have a cat look just like that. Headlights saved by a rescuer in a boat. This historic rain has turned deadly. At least one man killed in Dubai when his car was swept away. While in neighboring Oman, authorities say at least 18 were killed in flash flooding. Dozens more rescued, some by helicopter. And in nearby Pakistan, the death toll has now surpassed 60, officials say. In the UAE, the unprecedented rain is raising concerns about something called cloud seeding, which the UAE has been doing for years. Cloud seeding is an attempt um, to get more water out of clouds. This is largely by making the droplets larger and more able to survive. Cloud seeding uses airplanes to disperse chemicals like silver iodine inside clouds to give moisture something to cling to. Badly needed in deserts like the Gulf, but not not when it falls this fast. The UAE's National Center of Meteorology says no cloud seeding took place during this rainfall, but doesn't deny cloud seeding flights took place in the days before. But weather experts say it was unlikely a factor, given how the whole region was inundated with rain. The weather system that produced the rain um, in Dubai is over hundreds of kilometers, really very many organized thunderstorms. There's a real mismatch between what you might do in a local way with cloud seeding and this regional rainfall we've seen over a really wide area. Tonight, Dubai is cleaning up from the chaos and bracing for more extreme weather to come. Across the globe, extreme weather events are becoming more common due to climate change, with the warmer atmosphere soaking up more extreme weather. Did you hear what he said? More extreme Tonight, Dubai is cleaning up from the chaos and bracing for more extreme weather to come. Across the globe, extreme weather events are becoming more common due to climate change, with the warmer atmosphere soaking up moisture and then dumping it in massive storms like the ones in Dubai. Tom? All right, Josh. <sighs> what? What what do you think? Can I tell you, can I tell you what God says about this? Can I tell you, yes, right. You said it. Can I tell you what I think? I'm going to tell you what God says about this. Can, can, can I read to you what the Lord said about this? Yes. Sister White says, listen what Sister White says. Uh, where did she say it at? Satan also works through the what? Elements. To gather his harvest of unprepared stores. He has studied the secrets of the laboratories of what? nature and he uses all his power to control the elements as far as god allows so he could have it could have been through those men's seed in those clouds and he just took it to an extreme right yeah, yeah, yeah. right and listen to this right here we are told even now even now he is at work in accidents and calamities by land and sea in great conflagrations and fierce tornadoes terrific hailstorms tempests and what somebody is that what you just saw Cyclones, tidal waves, and earthquakes in every place in how many forms? Thousand thousand forms. forms? What does a thousand forms imply? Different ways. Different ways. Satan is exercising his power. Then it would say it will be declared that men are offending who? God. By the violation of the Sunday Sabbath and that this sin has brought calamities which will not cease until Sunday observance shall be strictly enforced. So, Pastor Mason, Elder Mason, why, based on what we just read in inspiration, why would a Sunday law be passed based on this? Because they have come to a conclusion right. that the problem is we're not giving a, a God's, uh, God's day of rest. We're not being loyal. We're not obeying God. And so we need, God is upset. And we need to do something to appease him where he will right. pull back and stop this stuff. He is punishing us. And guess what? And guess what this website is pushing? A weekly rest, one day a week for the earth. Did you see this? Mm. And guess what, brothers and sisters? I have a video that I have. I sh I, I usually state line is the first to see it, but I showed it to a church last week in in, uh, in Georgia. Brother Mason, I think brother, um, and y'all both brother Masons, no no relation, <laughs> or at least we don't know, but you we never know. Found it, we haven't found it yet. <laughs> so if, 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 there, if there's a, maybe one of your, maybe one of your uncles man went down there, I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> uh, slow Sunday challenge, did you see that? Mm. Slow, keep a weekly earth Sabbath. Brothers and sisters, Brother Cologne, I want you to listen very closely. I don't know how they say listen closely in French, but however they say it, listen. 
Listen to this. Are you ready? Sister Palmer, I know you're from Jamaica, but I can't say it in Patois, but I need you to listen up. Listen to this. Introducing the Earth Sabbath, a transformative initiative that encourages individuals and communities to dedicate one day per week to reducing energy. Stop. How many days a week? One. One day. But see. Why not two? Not two. Not three. The, the Muslims have Friday. The Catholics got Sunday. And Protestants got Sunday, but Seventh-day Adventists and Jews got Saturday. Which one is going to win? Yeah, yeah. The one? one who does it the most, who has the most people on their side. Mm. Sunday. So this is not talking about keeping the seven-day Sabbath like we do every week. Nope. It's talking about the Earth Sabbath on what day? Sunday. Sunday. Consumption and allowing the Earth to rest. Observing an Earth Sabbath can lead to significant environmental benefits, such as reduced carbon emissions, decreased water pollution, and less solid waste production. This simple act of mindfulness can have a profound impact on the health of our planet. To fully embrace the concept of rest, the Slow Sunday Challenge... Stop! Sunday. Stop the Slow Sunday Challenge. I told you that Ellen G. White was a true prophet. I told you! Brother Chad, do you see what they're doing? The slow Sunday challenge. Do you think State Line 7 Day Adventist Church should be doing the slow Sunday challenge? No. No. By the grace of God, never. Oh, man. Look at that. Look at that. It is a mad science. To fully embrace the concept of rest, the slow Sunday challenge invites participants to maintain the Sabbath for two consecutive months. Stop. Maintain the Sabbath. They want you to, no, you got to understand that they want us to do, take it off the screen. They want us to do the slow Sunday challenge. Take it off. They want us to do the slow Sunday challenge for two consecutive months. They want everybody all over the world to do this for two months. Why did they say two months? Slow the spread. Not slow the spread. <laughs> They're trying to prime. They're trying to prime the people. They want to prime the people because they know people are not used to doing it. So let's do, if we can get people to do it just for two months. Like for instance, if I tell you if you've been eating a certain article of diet all your life, look, just go vegetarian for just one week mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and see how it goes. Yeah. Mm -hmm. what, or once a month, right? Or once a week. What you want to say? Yeah, it may. It will start off with uh, two months, mm -hmm. but then eventually it's going to be like, you know what? Let's just extend this, and then eventually they'll say, yes. you know, we'll just keep doing this. You, you, you know, because it, they'll show the benefit, what happened. Yes. While right. we all did this, this is what happened. This is how everything got better. Mm -hmm. We just need to extend it and continue on. That's what happened during the pandemic. I said we can learn a lot during, from the lockdowns. Yeah, from the lockdown. Look at how everything has improved with the climate. Right. That's right. So... Exactly. Mm. So what they're saying is for just two months, just for two months, mm. two months, just stop. This, let's just slow down on Sunday. Mm -hmm. It's not priming the people. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. But I got some news for you, and I mean everybody here. Did you know that this group addressed me publicly on their website? Really? Yes. I'm going to show you. You're not going to believe until I show you. Let's go back to the screen. The, the, the Earth Sabbath movement. It's called the Earth Sabbath movement. Sister Amoni, doesn't that kind of sound like what we've been talking about for all this time? Mm. Listen to this. You gotta know somebody's radar. Mm. The Slow Sunday Challenge invites participants to maintain the Sabbath for two consecutive months. By overcoming the constant busyness that often consumes our lives, we can rediscover the restorative power of slowing down and appreciating the natural world around us. Together, we can rally support for the Earth Sabbath initiative by organizing Earth Sabbath marches, demonstrating our commitment to protecting the Earth and promoting sustainable practices. Through collective action and a shared vision. Collective action and a shared vision. What, doesn't that kind of sound like what your daddy was talking about in the day? Absolutely. Doesn't that sound like what we've been reading in the Great Controversy, brother? Yes. Can, can we agree with that? So can we see how prophecy is progressively being fulfilled? Mm -hmm. And brothers, now notice, will the Sunday law come from the bottom up or from the top down? Top down. From the bottom up, am I right? It's going to be an agitation. Who's going to push it? The people. Mm -hmm. And look at that, Earth Sabbath marches is exactly what this is about. Mm -hmm. We can create a ripple effect that inspires others to join this. A ripple effect? 
You hear that? You hear that, Maurice? Mm -hmm. Transformative movement. Embrace the Earth Sabbath and let us embark on a journey towards a more sustainable future, one day of rest at a time. Visit. Oh, 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 oh. How, how many days of rest at a time? One day. And what day are they pushing? Sunday. www.earthsabbath.world. Now that's what they say. That's what they say on that video. Keep it on the screen now. But guess what I found out? They got some more. Listen to this. It says what the world would look like in 2050 if we keep a weekly Earth Sabbath now. That's, do you hear that? Mm -hmm. Can I play it for you? Yes. World in 2050, where Earth's landscapes and ecosystems are thriving, resilient, and teeming with biodiversity. A world where the once accelerating permafrost thaw in the Arctic has been slowed and fragmented habitats have been reconnected. This vision of Earth's renewal is not merely a dream, but a tangible reality that can be achieved through collective action. By embracing a weekly Earth Sabbath, we can give the planet... Notice, a weekly Earth Sabbath. Doesn't this sound like the Mark of the Beast, y'all? Mm -hmm. <sighs> Somebody said it is. <laughs> a much-needed respite, allowing it to breathe and heal. This weekly pause can mitigate the impacts of climate change and preserve the delicate balance of nature. Through scientific research and mathematical models, we can understand the connections between habitat preservation, species diversity, and planetary health. By connecting fragmented habitats and reducing our carbon footprint, we can create a future where Earth's ecosystems thrive and biodiversity flourishes. The power of a weekly Earth Sabbath lies in its ability to reconnect us with the natural world and cultivate appreciation. Imagine communities coming together, engaging in activities that nurture and protect the environment, creating a truly transformative collective impact. The journey towards Earth's renewal begins with each of us as individuals and communities embracing the power of a weekly Earth Sabbath. By making this commitment, we can shape a future where our planet thrives and our children inherit a world of beauty and abundance. Let us embrace the Earth Sabbath and witness the renewal of our planet, one week at a time, guided by science and inspiration. Vis guided by science and inspiration. One week at a time. One week at a time. What do you want to say about that, um, Brother Mason? I mean, I'm, I'm sitting here. If you ask someone to make a small commitment, mm -hmm. they might commit. I'll try it. But then if the result ends up good, the Earth Sabbath then they'll decide, you know what, that wasn't so bad. Right. And if this helps the whole world, why not do it? Why not do it? And so you will get many non-religious people See? Who, who are not even about church at all, not about any Sabbath, go, well, if this is going to help the whole world, and this is all it's going microphone. to take, and this is not about a religion, this is about an Earth Sabbath, I can sign up for that. All right, we're gonna try. And, we're gonna try. Hello, we're gonna try and see if we can use this one instead. All right. Yes, you can just put that back. I'm sorry, brother. Okay. All right, hold on. I see your hand. Okay. Yes. Go ahead. Who? who where's the mic at? Um, but 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 before brother Cologne, before you give him the mic, does that sound a little bit what we've been talking about? Yes, that's what it is. It, that's what it is. This is the Sunday movement, brothers and sisters. It's coming, but not, is it coming in a religious form? It's coming more from a globalistic environmental form. Yeah, Am I right? Absolutely. Go ahead, brother. Now, if you look, if you notice on that video, they're trying to show it as a utopia. Right. Mm -hmm. Where everything is all pleasant and good and all nice. But the fact of the matter is the Bible didn't tell us that. So that's a lie. <laughs> right. It's going to look, yes, brother. Uh, if I can add something uh, in line with what Brother Mason was saying, I believe, and you heard them also mention the ecological movement. Ecological where the community movement. come together. Mm -hmm. So for two months, that's what I had in my mind. Two months. So what they can do is let's say, okay, let's, de let's just clean one. I I I'm living in New York. Okay, mm -hmm. there is one, I don't remember the name of that. Uh, it's uh, a sewer system. I don't remember the name. It's like right. a, uh, a small uh, uh, water waterway. L let's say if they decide for that two months in New York City, 
they're going to concentrate for everybody in Brooklyn to clean that water away that has been polluted for more than 60 years. Mm. And they can get the whole community to come in two months to get that done. Right. You understand? I've, done, I've seen it done in my country back in 80, mm. after the fall of Duvalier. Right. So if they can realize a small project like that in right. two months, and everybody see, oh, my neighborhood is being transformed. You understand? They say, okay, we're going to rest on Sunday. On Saturday, we're going to go out as a community Stop. and work. Stop. That's deep. Because, sister, because watch this. We are told in the inspiration that they're going to do just what he said. Rest on Sunday and work on Saturday. Mm -hmm. And that's real, real, That's when the market of beast really going to hit hard. Mm -hmm. Go ahead, my brother. So when everybody realizes we are transforming one block at a time, mm -hmm. right. so why, 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 why is that good? If you dare to say we need to keep Sabbath, you are, you are, you are, you are out of uh, Out of order, out of your mind. and all that stuff. Mm -hmm. but, yes, this is deep. Yes, yeah. so he had a, a brother. Um, thank you, my brother. Think about it. They're going to try to make us work on Saturday. Oh, they will make, make us work on Saturday. Now, it may not be your job on Saturday, but right. they may say you may want to do computing. Let's help the earth. Let's clean some. Let's do some cleanup exactly. on mm. Saturday. Mm. And what is going to be our, what's, what does our answer have to be? No. 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 If Go you, ahead. If, if you look at D.C., D.C., especially Southeast D.C., used to be so bad. Yeah, yeah I know. From there. But if you look at DC today, it's clean. It's clean. Yeah. Hold on, one minute. Baltimore, I show you the same thing. In West Baltimore, East Baltimore, and all of those places, you'll see the same rundown and everything. But if you go a certain place in Baltimore, it's very clean. Right. The same utopia they're gonna show you. This is the same two months rest. They're gonna be cleaning up those places, just like you said for New York. They're gonna do it. They're going to do it. As I see, this is what produced for those two months. Yeah. So they try. So basically, to, co to cover a lie properly, they're going to do certain things so that they're like, just like in the, in the pandemic. Exactly. <laughs> let's go to the screen. Let's go to the screen. We're going to show you something. Now, some years ago, let's go to the screen, Brother Richard. Um, it said Slow Sunday. Now, they're taking this concept in 2024 from something that was told in 2009, the simple solution to global warming. Using Sunday as a day of rest and renewal will be good for our personal health and of the planet. And then it says one thing we can easily do, we can declare Sunday to be a fossil fuel free day or a low carbon energy day mm -hmm. we can start individually and collectively and that's what this earth sabbath movement is all about but listen the earth sabbath is a global movement that calls for a weekly day of rest for our planet to combat cl what kind of movement is it global. a global movement climate change the earth sabbath is a global the earth sabbath is a global movement that calls for a weekly day of rest for our planet to combat yeah. climate change the earth i think that she hit it right on the dot that's the whole that's the whole agenda to stop what kind of change Climate. and God had already told us they were going to say that am I right yep. so we can look at this and know that this is a fulfillment of at least one of the movements that's going to bring it about right listen to this Sabbath encourages individuals to take action by reducing their energy consumption through simple yet impactful ways to amplify this message the Earth Sabbath movement is organizing global marches to raise awareness and asking people to share Earth Sabbath videos on social media. The Earth Sabbath is an opportunity to reflect on the Earth, recognize the harm done, and strengthen our connection with nature. The Earth Sabbath movement is about recognizing the importance of the Earth and showing love and respect for our shared home. So if you don't keep Sunday, then you don't have love and respect for your home. Mm. Mm. And remember, it's not it, when the demons come in human form and tell you that, yes, the reason why all these things are happening because we're not keeping Sunday holy. Mm. Your dead Satan in the form of dead loved ones are going to say, if you really love me. Oh, man. <laughs> oh, man. Mm. You got to understand, it's going to be that spiritualism aspect. Yes. I, I see your hand, brother. Mm. It's going to be the spiritualism aspect that's really going to hit the fan. Let's put it back on the screen because then I'm going to get to some questions. And I'm going to show you what the Earth Sabbath movement said about the Sunday Law update. 
The Earth Sabbath Rest Day is an opportunity to you Stop. unite. Unite for who? Earth. Unite for who? Earth. What does unite mean? Come together. Remember, Mind Ellen White said the whole world was in harmony with the Sunday law. And if you don't, you're not loving. If you're not. You see how they're going. You, you, you see. You see how it's going to make sense now. Mm. The death decree is going to be on Adventists, and we're going to have to go to the mountains and even leave these country rural areas. Mm. Mm. Do you see that? Wow. Hold on now. Hold on. I, I see the hands. Mm. Unite in our common goals of protecting the earth and its resources. The Earth Sabbath movement is not just about reducing consumption, but also about. It says demand action now. How, how, okay. How? What's the best way to demand action? You, basically, you, you, you're saying we should force people. How? Through laws. Mm -hmm. Would you agree with that? I would agree with that. So if it says demand action now, then what are they really pushing? The push a Sunday, Sunday law. A Sunday law. They pushing a Sunday law. Mm. Mm. Go ahead. I was just thinking, see, they, as they do this slow Sunday and priming the people and getting the people to come together yes. as people start to say okay let, let, let's try it out and they're looking for that utopia right but things keep happening right things keep going wrong and then uh these heathen deities show up and say well the reason why the problems keep happening right. is because some people over there them seven day mm, hadn't, hadn't been followed and i'm going to share mm. with you what the earth sabbath movement said to the Sunday Law Update and Seven Day Adventist. Oh, wow. Watch this. Creating mm. awareness and demanding action for change. The Earth Sabbath movement is a call to action for individuals to participate in this weekly day of rest for the planet. Weekly day of rest. It's over, y'all. It's over. Mm -hmm. Join the Earth Sabbath movement and be part of the global effort to protect our shared home for future generations. Visit www.earthsabbath.world to learn more about the Earth Sabbath movement and how you can get involved in this powerful initiative. Together, we can make a difference and ensure a sustainable future for generations to come. Didn't the Bible say that they will all have one mind? Mm -hmm. So we see it, but see, this is what happened. This is from this website and a weekly day of rest but look what happened on when you go on their website they want it and look who they quote pope francis tell people to keep the seven day sabbath mm -hmm. so they're pushing the pope look at this check out this report about giving the earth a weekly a weekly rest i think we already covered this already we, we already covered it but what happens is this and look what it says car free sunday on earth trying on earth sabbath try not to drive mm. But look at this, a challenge for the Seventh Day Adventist Church. Whoa. Oh, let's read that. Yeah, let's, let's read yeah, that. that. <laughs> now, Sister um, Henry, mm. I want you to see this. All right, I see smiling. I want you. I don't want her just here. I want her to say. I know. I know. After we we have so much fun here, we do get tired. This is what it said. Over the past month. Many videos have been posted with the topic Sunday Law Update. Oh, mercy. Ooh. Oh, mercy. <laughs> All right. Maybe I should have tied to this video, the Earth Sabbath Movement. Let me tell you what it says. Posted with the topic Sunday Law Update, EarthSabbath.world website and videos have been a part of the sermon topic in these videos. Wow. I would like to challenge seven day Adventists to put their focus on encouraging people to keep an earth Sabbath on the seventh day. We've been doing that since 1844, according to their religion, belief, and faith instead of the Sunday law. What is she telling me? Because she's really telling it to me. What is she saying? Don't, don't, don't equate what I'm doing with the Sunday law movement. What you want to say, brother? I, I, I'm, I'm, my, my, I'm stuck. I, I, that is a direct. There it is, right there. Coming right at you, like, wait a minute, stop talking about what I'm doing. Yeah. And encourage your people to do to keep an Earth Sabbath. Yes. Yeah. On Saturday. We do. You should write an article. We are doing. You say, Maybe yeah, I should. We are doing the same thing. Right. To but keep that what? We're doing the same thing, right? Yes, we are doing the keep same thing. Earth it's on just the on Sunday. Day. So they are telling you, 
Just follow us, and but just keep doing what you are doing on Saturday. We've We're been doing, doing it. Thing. But the problem is, see, remember what Ellen White says? Listen to what Ellen G. White says. She says that, and that those who present the claims of the fourth commandment, thus destroying reverence for what? Sunday. Are troublers of the people, preventing their restoration to divine favor and temporal prosperity. Why, why, why not? Well, I've had so many people send that lady stuff. They, they've sent her my videos, my websites, everything. Mm. And look what it says. I, I, as I am sure their brothers and sisters in Christ who will be keeping Sunday will be encouraging others as to their religion, denomination, belief, and faith. The focus is to give the earth a rest and for each person to reduce their negative impact on the environment. But they say, don't be focusing on a Sunday law. They said it right there. And she put the three words, Sunday law update, and it's only one person that I know. That's doing a Sunday law update. But guess what's going on? Other people are putting that now. Mm -hmm. If you look online, if you put people are putting Sunday law updates on that. So you know what? Look Everybody up. needs to be doing it. So, so let me just say this. There's no patent on that term, Sunday law update. So I'm not here mad at nobody. Because mm -hmm. pretty soon we all gonna have to give our own Sunday law update on social media. Mm, that's right. Mm -hmm. Take it off the screen. What, what you want to say, sister? Oh, you want to see it? All right, let's see what she said. All right, this is what she said. Hmm. Hold on. Let's, what did she say? As taught in the Bible, humans have a responsibility to be faithful stewards of the earth, as taught in the Bible. The Sabbath day of rest can play a significant role in reducing environmental impact and promoting sustainability. Seventh-day Adventists advocate for a simple, wholesome lifestyle that respects the natural environment. So they know what they know who we are. Yes. Mm. They know what we do. Caring for the environment requires personal and cooperative effort, and Seventh Day Adventists are committed to promoting healing at both personal and environmental level. That is true, but their keeping rest one day a week supports the weekly Earth Sabbath movement. Yeah, see. They're trying to mix our agenda, what we do with theirs. Is that completely true? No. All right. Visit earthsabbath.world. Okay. All right. Take off. Take it off the screen. You, I wasn't even going to show you the video, but since you asked for it. Oh. See, I, I, I'm kind of confused because take it, take it off the screen, Richard. I see hands going up. So let's, let's get to the, let's, let's, I want to hear what y'all got to say. Brother Richard, can you take it off the screen? All right. Go ahead. What, what y'all want to say about that? Everybody woke up on that. Everybody woke up on that. <laughs> It's true what they're saying, but the devil's going to use it to try to get us to go along with what they're, they're doing. Is. But it's what, what she said is. That's a lie. I, think I disagree with her. Yeah, it, yeah, it's true. Okay, we don't keep the earth Sabbath. Okay, we no. keep the Christian Sabbath. Am I right? See, the Earth Sabbath, that's, the, the, see, you saw they want a slow Sunday challenge for the next two months. So they recognize Sunday as the Sabbath. Two can't walk together, except they be with somebody. So, yeah, they, go ahead. Go ahead. Go ahead. Uh, I, wait till I show you this next video. This is the reason why I'm confused. Go ahead. I'm not really confused, but go ahead. The spelling, you know, of the Sabbath press is all correct, but... One is supported by the creator, and one is supported by tradition. Right. So, that, so it's not the same. They're trying to make you think it is by just saying Sabbath rest, but not defining our Sabbath rest and theirs. That's right. Yes. I want to hear what y'all got to say about this. Sister Henry, what you want to say? Nothing. Okay, she's just chilling. Okay. Wait till you see this next video, and Brother Mason, when I show you this next video, you're going to know why you're here today. Go ahead. Now, when I hear that and I see that, the first thing that flashed to my mind is Adam and Eve. When the devil came right there and, 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 and tempted Eve, the lie that he used, he says, that's the same thing, <laughs> same thing they're doing. Mm. The same exact thing. Mm. Mm. They're trying to use our Sabbath, the Christian mm. Sabbath, to use for their earth sabbath how how foolish is that actually that's a smart move no but it's it's a smart move but it is very foolish when we look yes. at, looking at it 
But it's a very smart move because you know what? A lot of Adventists will adhere to that. Yeah. Yeah. Well, you have some so my question is, what would, our what would our leaders tell us at that time? So, oh, man. Yo, you, mm, you, 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 just, let me, just let me just put just, just one little bit. You know how the LGBTQ community gained traction? By connecting to the to the to the trials of the civil rights, of black, the civil rights, rights movement. right? And now they don't have to mention the civil rights movement anymore because they have gotten full traction. Yes. Now, by doing this for those Seventh Day Adventists who are not for real, will connect themselves to a false movement and still feel like they're Seventh Day Adventists. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Yes, well, who um, else? Go ahead, so brother. I see in, you, sister. So in this part, uh, what I see is that um, she did a great thing to mention us, mm -hmm. and that gives us more publicity to say the truth. Now, the fact that um, she says that we could keep our Earth Day on the seventh day is a true lie. <laughs> <laughs> because... We are not, we are not obeying or um, observing the created, because the earth is created. Mm -hmm. Right. We observe the creator, creator. Right. and because we observe the creator, the created benefits mm -hmm. That's of right. what the creator That's right. created. Mm -hmm. So I'm really sorry that she is confused between That's those right. two. Mm -hmm. And I believe that is where we have a very great task to bring her to that uh, acknowledgement that actually if we serve the creator, then the creator is going to do much better. Mm -hmm. And you know what's interesting? And, Go ahead, I'm sorry. And the last thing is that um, there is this movement that actually says that we don't need God to save the earth. We can save the planet by ourselves. So we don't need Jesus Christ anymore. Mm. So if we fix it ourselves, Jesus doesn't need to come anymore. Mm. So every belief that clings on to this thing is actually anti the coming of Jesus Christ. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, brother, this is my sister and then Brother Chad. I just wanted to add something to what he said. Um, error doesn't have to be 100% right. for That's you right. to right. Point to be wrong. It's just this much. Okay, just That's this right. much. Mm -hmm. and, and also, it reminds me of a virus. A virus will come, the virus that they can't mm -hmm. hear with it will come and it will attach itself to your immune system and then your immune system can't tell the difference, mm. okay? And it will keep it there, and it just slowly attack the body under the, the, the quiet. And that is what they are doing. Mm. And you know, you, you, if, if you, my, my English teacher was my favorite teacher in school. One yes. of the things she taught is that you have to look with, don't just read what you see there. You have to think like what could have been there to make the same sentence changing it i don't know if you understand what i'm trying to say and it, that's what satan has done just a play on words you know just turn little words here and there and then you, a whole mindset is changed and then people just go in by the droves and become his slaves man yes my sister wait let's give you a microphone and for those of you online you can just put your comments in there wait till i show you this next video wait wait till i share this with you monique this is really this is a religious this is a religious liberty issue now watch this i'm going to show it to you Watch this. Go ahead. Yes. And the other thing that we, it, we, people are not going to like is biblically, the world is not going to be fixed until Christ comes and remakes it. True, we are stewards of the world. We are to prolong as much of the damage, but we're not going to fix mm -hmm. it. Only Christ is going to reset all these things. That's right. And this... This um, see how we're fixing and doing. W why is it ruined in the first place? It's mm. from the greed of man and all of the extra things. And yeah, now they're going. Well, see how bad we've been. Now we've got to correct these things. No, only Christ taking away sin is going to correct these things. Mm. And we have to come to the understanding that each individual 
has to choose to do it, not right. be compulsed or forced. Mm -hmm. Exactly. And it's going gonna, it's gonna to lead to that. Yes, my sister. Then we're going to go to, well, I'm going to show you this be video. Before I give the sister the mic, I'll say something. Yes. Uh, there is 10,000 10, religions in the world. Mm -hmm. That doesn't surprise anybody that only the Seventh-day Adventist is, 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 uh, is mentioned there. Mm. 10 million religion only do you understand that, that it's going to be it's going to be like Elijah it was 850 false prophets and he was the only one telling the truth it's going to be one seven day in his church composed when the tears are shaken out mm. and it's going to be a small remnant 144,000 whether it's literal or symbolic we'll find out at that time against the whole world mm. go ahead sister uh, what she was actually doing was the same talking out of two sides of her mouth. Thank you. That's what I believe. She was <laughs> doing a slight accusation to us, and then she took us to unite the whole world together. Yes. Let's go back to the screen now. For those of you that just came in, Sister Daphne, I need you to listen. <laughs> Let's go to the screen. Okay. I, wanna sh I want you to hear this. I want you to hear this. All right, now listen to this. Didn't we show you that the Earth Sabbath was pushing for a slow Sunday for the next two months? Mm -hmm. It says we will be posting about the environmental crisis providing the need for a weekly Earth Sabbath day of rest as one solution for the world's environmental problems. And look what it says, a challenge for the seventh day of Venice Church. Over the past month, many videos have been posted on the topic, Sunday Law Update. Do you know who does that, sister? Us. And our videos have been a part. I would like to challenge Seven Day Adventists to put their focus on encouraging people to keep an Earth Sabbath on the seventh day according to their religion, belief and faith instead of the Sunday Law. In other words, don't talk about the Sunday Law no more. And one of the videos that they put down here was this right here. And this is going to tell me, let you know, like the, our sister said, she's talking out of both sides of her neck. Christians embrace the Earth Sabbath. Christians have a deep respect for the environment as God's creation, leading to a commitment to environmental stewardship. The observance of a weekly Sabbath provides both spiritual renewal and a break for the Earth, aligning with the broader Earth Sabbath movement. Christians partner with governments. Stop. Christians partner with what? And we were told that they would stretch their hands across the Gulf. Mm -hmm. Am I right? Right. Do you see that? Christians partner with who? Governments. Doesn't that sound like the union of church and state? Absolutely. So whatever she's talking about to us, hmm. understand that when they start saying Christians are partnering with governments, what do you think that means, Brother Mason? That means Christians, My Christians, <laughs> I, I should know better than that. <laughs> Christians will partner, they're already partnering with governments to push their agenda. Mm -hmm. And so that they, they, they will come together to say, the government say, we have a problem. Christians will say, we have a solution. Now, if you would push our solution, we can work together. Yeah. Wow. Listen to this individuals and communities to address larger scale environmental issues promoting the long-term health and sustainability of the planet by embracing the earth sabbath christians can contribute to the overall care and preservation of the natural world visit earthsabbath.world so so they said partnering with governments do you understand this right here yeah this is serious y'all and then, you know, what's so funny about it is, while this is happening, the Pope is recovering the title called Patriarch as a, of the West as an ecumenical gesture. Mm. The Patriarch, that means the Father Governor. The West. Yes, Richard. Okay, Pastor. Uh, I, I see what they're doing. Mm-hmm. Uh, they have already already infiltrated our style of worship. Well, their style of worship in our uh, churches. Yes. Uh, so what I'm saying is they have already begun 
getting us prepared to follow what they're going to be doing already. Right. Mm -hmm. So what we need to do is continue to do what God says and, you know, take what they're saying but continue to do what, because you're going to have opposition. Oh, we understand that. So what I'm saying is the other churches who are not following the blueprint like like stated in the in the spirit of prophecy, they have to answer to God. Amen. Now, is Brother Karanza in the back with you? Uh no, it's uh, it's just you? Me and okay, go ahead, my brother. Hold, hold on. And hold on, before you say something, one of our um viewers said that Sunday, what did it say here? It said that, what did they say? And I can't find it. Oh, it was right there. Listen to this right here. They said that the Sunday law is not going to come without Sabbath work. Other words, sa okay, when the Sunday law comes, we're going to be compelled to work on Saturday. And I've always wondered, okay, does that mean they're going to make you work? How would they make us work? It may not mean you working on Saturday on your job. They may say you need to go out and do some community service work on Saturday, which would be a violation of the Sabbath if we were to do it, mowing the lawn, picking up trash and stuff like that. Do you understand this? This thing is the labor unions is serious. They might call it a clean day. They may call it a clean day. Mercy. And see, it's going to shut down the observance of the true Sabbath. Do you understand this? Yes. Now, what you want to say? <laughs> I'm sorry. <laughs> we, this, y'all, what are we going to do? Mm. Now, that's what I'm sitting here thinking. <laughs> yeah. We've got to figure out individually what we're going to do. You know how when the pandemic happened, Right. First of all, let me say I love my church. Right. But when the pandemic came down and lots of people were poised to lose their job. Right. There wasn't a lot of support from the top. No. It just wasn't. All right. You had to make up your mind what you were going to do. I can see very clearly how mixing us an Earth Sabbath with keeping the seventh day right. will blind people. And when you say, when we say, no, no, that's not it, we will be looking for support from the top. And we won't get it. We probably won't get when it. When the whole world is turning around looking at you, you're going to look to your leaders, our leaders, and they're, they're, gonna, they're not going to give the support you think they should. What shall we do? Is and, what I'm and think about that for a minute, because mm -hmm. when the jab came out, you know that we did not get no support. None. None. For those of us that wanted to exempt ourselves, and I see you, it's going to be hard to believe. Mm -hmm. Well, I can't say that, but don't be surprised if we won't get that same support from the top. Yeah. yeah. Because there's going to be a lot of seven-day Adventists who are going to view Matt. No matter of fact, let, let, me, let me take you to the spirit of prophecy. I see, I see you because I don't want to say, I see you, Sister Monique. We're going to get to you. I want to take it's you to the spirit of prophecy. Life. All right. I think it's 608. Mm -hmm. All right. Now, uh, Brother Richard, let's go to the screen. Now, I want to take you to the screen right here. It says, quote, as the storm approaches, a large class who have professed faith in the third angel's message but have not been sanctified through obedience to the truth. That's why we got to be sanctified mm -hmm. to the truth. Will abandon their position and join the ranks of the opposition by uniting with the world. And see, this is, where our, this is why we got to do a clean sweep in our church of all this apostasy. And partaking of its what, somebody? Spirit. 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 They have come to view matters in nearly the, the same, same light. light. Seven-day Adventists. There will be seven day Adventists who will view this in the same light as mm. the Sunday keepers. And when the test is brought, they are prepared to, to choose, choose the easy, popular, popular side. Men of talent and pleasing address who once rejoiced in the truth will employ their power to deceive and mislead souls. Have mercy. You will have Adventists telling Adventists to go along with Sunday worship. Go along. Mm. 
I see the hands going up. But hold on. I see the hands. Now, for those of you that just came in, I'm doing this for those who just came in. Listen closely, and then we can really answer some questions. Watch this. Introducing the Earth Sabbath, a transformative initiative that encourages individuals and communities to dedicate one day per week to reducing energy consumption and allowing the Earth to rest. Observing an Earth Sabbath can lead to significant environmental benefits, such as reduced carbon emissions, decreased water pollution, and less solid waste production. This simple act of mindfulness can have a profound impact on the health of our planet. To fully embrace the concept of rest, the Slow Sunday Challenge invites participants to maintain the Sabbath for two consecutive months. Sister Daphne, they say Let's do the slow Sunday challenge for two consecutive months. In other words, to get people used to the idea of keeping a Sabbath. Now, if this is successful in the next two months, do you think they're going to stop? They're going to keep on doing it. And see, this, see, once this movement really gets off ground and they're going to connect this with climate change, brothers and sisters, it's really going to be over. Take it off the screen. We got some hands up. Sister, we're going to start here at the front, and they're going to go around. And I see a lot of hands, so we need to actually make your comments or questions less than 30 seconds. Go ahead. We are already um, treating the Sabbath lightly. Some churches believe it's okay to do certain humanitarian things on the Sabbath, like mm. build houses. Yeah. And they go to that extreme. So, like you were saying earlier, if they turn the Sabbath into something where we're required to do these things, it wouldn't be hard for them to just to continue to do that. Yep. Mm -hmm. Yeah? Okay. Yes, sir. All right. Uh, the scripture that said it's lawful to do good on the Sabbath. See, they may put that on us. Yeah. To what extreme will we be using that statement? It's lawful, right? Secondly, um, I can see how when all support is taken, when all support is taken from us, when it's yes. okay, mm -hmm. you can't work on Sunday, right? right? So for us that have to work on Sunday as to not, you know, compromise the Sabbath, that's how they're going to force us in terms of case. Either you work on Saturday yes. because you have to meet the requirements of, you know, uh, the labor unions, right? You have to work on a Sunday. And also, um, they keep mentioning, you know, uh, the carbon footprint, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. Right. We, uh, do more carbon footprint from Monday to Friday. You would think? Because right. that's when we work most. Mm -hmm. So why is it that they're putting all this emphasis and focus on Sunday as, you know, right. refraining from putting, using up so much carbon footprint? Mm -hmm. yeah. I mean, just, it, it just wow. you know, baffles my mind. Yeah, I'm trying to find the statement where she says they're going to force us. Okay, she says they're going to, hold on. Go ahead. And the other thing that we, 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 we forget is we're told that slavery is going to be reintroduced. Well, what's slavery? Oh, wow. In the articles of the Constitution, a prisoner is legal slavery. And we are told that the chain gains will be reinstituted. Right. Hmm. And they were forced to work on Saturday. Saturday. Mm. Mm. Now watch this right here. Um, one of the things, me and this brother were thinking on the same lines. Um, one, they're talking about climate change happening because of the carbon and this and that and the other thing and that reducing it will, will help, mm -hmm. right? One, they say that people do more shopping and all that stuff on Saturday and they still work on Saturday as well. So if you really want to reduce carbon, why don't you close everything on Saturday? Now, I still wouldn't be for that either because I don't believe in forcing people to do anything, mm -hmm. right? But again, their logic doesn't make any sense. Right. And like, like this brother was saying, and like I was thinking, again, climate change started before there was any carbon, carbon right? Climate change started when Adam and Eve sinned, right? Mm -hmm. Thorns started to appear, this and that and the other thing. Climate change. Um, we have a big climate change when the flood came. Mm -hmm. So forcing people to do anything isn't going to change that. And that's mm -hmm. something that we really need to get through to our people to help them understand. It sounds pretty. 
Sounds good, yeah. Sounds real good, but it can't work. And if they start to do that, Satan can make things look like it's working mm. because he has the power to pollute the air. He has, he's been starting a lot of stuff, just like he takes, like he can take a disease away that he put on somebody. Mm -hmm. He can make it look real good, but it's not gonna last. Mm. Next person. I see you, sister. I see you, Sister Palmer. Uh, I was going to go again with, uh, in line with uh, Brother Mason, uh, and I think that was part of the message this morning also. Mm. Uh, do you know Christ for yourself? That's the question that we need to ask ourselves today. Because we can see with uh, the crisis, the health crisis, everybody was waiting for the leadership right. to tell us in what direction to go. And up to today, nobody as a Christian as a Christian leader, not one of them dare to take the mic, dare to be on any podium, say, we did something wrong. Mm. Everybody's still hiding today while the whole thing is coming out that it was right. wrong. However, when this thing come out, and then we're going to turn again to them to say right. what direction we should go, the same thing is going to repeat itself again. Mm. And we will not have any direction. That's why we need to know Christ for ourselves. If you don't know Christ for ourselves, you're going to be looking for your pastor, looking for so and so, mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. see how you do you stand. And the people we admire, we just read it, those stars are going to fall down. Mm -hmm. How are they going to fall down? It's because they will not uphold the standard. Right. And if we have our eyes on them, we will fall down with them. See, a lot of things are happening at the same time. And brother, uh, Chad says something about slavery coming back. And I'm going to read to you what Ellen White says. Go ahead. My, my question is, if this was about, you know, the climate and everything, why do you need all of us for the day you said? Why, why don't you say, okay, John, you can take this day and exactly. day you want as long as you rest a day if it's all about the climate? Even if they did it, mm -hmm. even if they did it, after Satan gets through with this, they all going to do it on Sunday anyway. Mm -hmm. Let's go to the screen. Let's go to the screen. Will slavery come back? The Bible says he calls of all both rich and poor, free and slave. I'm instructed to say to our people throughout the cities of the South, let everything be done under the direction of the Lord. The work is nearing its close. We are nearer the end than we first believed. Satan is doing his best to block the way of the progress of the message. He is putting forth efforts to bring about the enactment of a what law? Which will result in slavery in the Southern field and close the door to the observance of the true Sabbath, which God has given men to keep holy. Mm. Brothers and sisters, but hold on. How is it going to come? It's going to come through a Sunday law, but hold on. Can I read you another statement from Sister White? Ellen G. White says, she was having a conversation with P.T. McGann. Ellen White said, quote, just as soon as people begin to make any kind of movement to educate the blacks, there are some who are determined it should not be done. This is racism. P.T. McGann said, it is common talk all over the South that there will be a race war within the next few years. Mm -hmm. Let me ask you a question. Is there brewing a race war even now? Yes. Yep. Senator Tillman has talked about it in the House. Governor-elect Hoke Smith and Tillman have published a plan that they're advocating everywhere. And listen what it is. Their plan is something like this, that they will divide every county into districts and every Negro is to be numbered. Mm -hmm. He will have a brass plate strapped to his arm with a leather strap giving his number 536 or 623 or whatever it may be. And then he is never to be allowed outside that district without a passport from the officers. And that's exactly what they did in South Africa in apartheid. Every black person had to carry a passport and any white person not just the police, any white person could have asked a black man, show me your passport, and they had mm. to show it. Mm. Mm. And then Ellen White says, there will be slavery just as verily as it has been only upon a basis that is more favorable and secure to who? The white people. So mm. guess what? The slavery, it's going to be whites enslaved too, because if you don't go along with Sunday law, you'll be enslaved. But what happens is, let me tell you this, she says, in a basis more secure and favorable to white people, and you know what it's called? 
It is called Jim Crow 2.0. Hmm. And brothers and sisters, Al Jazeera, as U.S. elections draw near, new efforts to suppress black votes. Brothers and sisters, you got these people, and thank God they are great voter suppression, black voters placing new restrictions and stuff like that. Stuff is going on. Now, Jim Point, oh, Jim Crow, two point, you know what Jim Crow was, right? Mm -hmm. I mean, there's some people who've lived through Jim Crow. Now, in Jackson, Mississippi, look at this right here. Look at this. Efforts made by the majority white Mississippi legislator to create courts with appointed rather than elected judges and to expand patrols by state police inside the majority black capital city of Jackson amount to Jim Crow 2.0. They passed this law last year in Mississippi and it got overturned, which means that they would have been appointed rather than elected over a totally black place city and you know what that have been called slavery mm. so when we talk about slavery coming back i don't think it's going to come back the way oh they took us on a boat and they did all it's going to be very 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 it's going to be a 21st century form of slavery mm. of course whites and blacks in jail but for blacks in the south she said listen to this on a basis that is more favorable and secure to the white people and it's only one thing that can do that in my mind, Jim Crow 2.0. Jim Crowism is coming back in the South. Do you understand this? And we see, take it off the screen. We see it slowly but surely. And like Brother uh, Mason said, the LGBT uh, put their agenda with our agenda mm -hmm. for freedom. And now it's all under diversity, equity, mm -hmm. inclusion. Mm -hmm. And now I'm going to show you what's going on. Now, diversity, equity, inclusion does not mean equal rights for women and blacks anymore. Mm -hmm. That's really now the LGBT's the face of That's it right. now. Mm -hmm. Whenever you think of DEI, brothers and sisters, DEI, that's a, that's a thing for uh, 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 the, the LGBT. Now, let's go to the screen. Let's go back to the screen. Let's look at this right here. Oh, come on. Look at the screen. It says, Governor Ivey, Alabama, what, what, Alabama Governor Kay Ivey signs a sweeping law that prohibits diversity, equity, and inclusion at public schools and universities. So what happens is they're doing, they're really doing it to get away with them, with get, get um, the LGBT stuff out, which I do support. But the problem is they won't allow any teaching to be taught in public schools and universities anything reminding them of the racist past of the United States, mm -hmm. which is really white supremacy. It's really truth suppression. Do you understand this? So that, you know how you heard that the Catholics kind of, um, how this right here, um, changed the historical books? Mm -hmm. Then you got racists that are changing history books. Yep. So that nobody, can, if people, if George Washington chopped down a cherry tree, but that was only part of the story. He had some slaves. Do you understand this right here? They were treated as chattel. Do you understand this? So Ellen White makes it very plain it's coming back, but it's going to come back in a way. And I believe this Jim Crowism is going to be the way. Go ahead, my brother. And then I'll show you another statement from the Great Controversy. Oh, as a matter of fact, let's, 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 go, let's, go, let's go to Great Controversy. Ellen White says in Great Controversy 626, listen to this right here. Now, hold up, okay. Now, Sister White talks about black and white will be enslaved too. Black, white bondage watch this right here all you got to do is just go to the testimonies listen to this right here this is from great controversy five let's just go to the 1888 edition ellen g white says but many of how many nations all nations and how many classes all classes high and low rich and poor black and white will be cast into the most unjust and cruel what bondage. so yes you'll have the jim crow slavery but it's going to be all over the world do you understand this and because the spirit of slavery still lives do you understand this and so what happens is you can enslave people right now digitally and electronically am i right mm -hmm. take away their right to buy and sell they have no choice you got slaves right. do you see this mm -hmm. so so listen to this breaking news Pope Francis recovers the title Patriarch of the West as an ecumenical gesture. Listen to this right here, y'all. Pope Francis can once again be called the Patriarch of the West. The new edition of the Vatican yearbook lists the papal titles, names, and duties of the curial staff. 
The Vatican has not yet given an explanation as to why Pope Francis is reinstating this title after his predecessor stopped using it in 2006. At that time, the then Pontifical Council for Promoting Christian Unity explained it was a difficult title to use today since the West is no longer defined by the borders of the Roman Empire. Culturally, the West could apply as far as New Zealand, which is counterintuitive since for ancient Rome, it was the easternmost part of the world. But Pope Francis's decision does not seem to be related to whether the position is relevant or not. Rather, it may be a gesture towards the Orthodox Church, where the Pope was seen as just one more among the patriarchs. The Pope would not be a superior figurehead. This is how the Rome advisor to the ecumenical patriarch of Constantinople. See, this title, Patriarch of the West, man, look here. Why is the Pope embracing this title? This was one of the titles they used to bring everybody together. Mm. This is dealing with royal rulership. Mm -hmm. What do you want to say about that, my brother? I, I, I was just, I find it interesting that they, they used the Patriarch of the West. Right. That's us over here. That's us, too. That's, that's him saying, or people recognizing him as right. the leader. The leader. Uh, the, the, the country or the, the people who, who were a, a, a separate right. from Catholicism. Right. Now he's, he's now accepting a title that says, I'm even in charge of the West now. Exactly. And look at this right here. Cardinal Gerard Mueller, Catholics are working towards a renewal of true Christian thinking in Europe, USA, and Latin America. And this was on the Tucker Carlson show. And look what he says right here. So, um, to, if you wouldn't mind, give us, and by us I mean Catholics and non-Catholics alike, I'm not Catholic, um, but I'm interested, in where you think the church and Christianity in general is moving right now at the beginning of 2024. Now, the situation in the different continents is uh, uh, different. In Africa, we have the uh, growing the Christianity, also the Catholic uh, Church. Uh, they are very alive and um, with a good number of, of good bishops and, and priests and, and lay people. But we see in, in Europe and the United States, uh, there we are uh, experiencing uh, a certain systematic dechristianization of the political ideological elite um, with the meaning that the old continent, old Europe has a, a old fashioned anthropology, a wrong understanding um, of what is uh, the human being. But we are as Christian convinced that we are creatures of God. We have the vocation to become friends of God. We have this uh, personal vocation to take part in the divine life. And therefore, we hope and we work for a, a renewal of a true Christian thinking and life in Europe and in the United States. And all. Mm -hmm. You hear that? So I see the hands. Brothers and sisters, they're pushing this agenda. You see it. Do, do you see it? Clearly. Do, you see it clear. Now, hold on now. Now, where's Monique at? Just and she just left. Yeah. Brothers and sisters, now listen to this. I'm, I'm going to get to Let me just get to a couple of more things before we look at this. Vatican News. Protestants feel connected to Pope Francis for his commitment to the environment. Mm. Mm. Mm -hmm. What do you think about that, Pastor? Um, we're told that the Protestants it's over, man. stretch their hands across the Gulf mm -hmm. with Catholicism. And they'll all be united with spiritualism. It'll be a threefold union. So um, we see that all these things that we're looking at, these various articles, right. confirm what Ellen White said would happen. He's con they feel commit connected to the Pope. Mm. For his seeing, they, Ellen White says the professed Protestant world will form a confederacy with the man mm -hmm. of sin. Mm -hmm. See, that's why I, I really am really leery about our leaders going, having these ecumenical meetings. Yeah shaking hands with the pope and stuff now let me just show it to you now i'm gonna just I'm gonna tell you this right here and and this is this i want to show this to you uh hold on a second ganoon diop you know and and i'm just showing this to you yeah, i mean you know i mean in the pope i'm just gonna show you the picture okay now let me tell you this right here uh where is it at uh he was shaking hands with the pope right here yeah, that's, I mean, whether he's a Catholic or not, look at this right here. I mean, brothers and sisters, do you know that 
I, Dr. O, will be questioned going into, a, I was questioned eight years ago. Mm. Somebody said you went to an unauthorized camp meeting, and guess who's, <laughs> it was your father's camp meeting, the Apocalypse Ministries, mm. and your father support the church like none other. I was questioned mm. about question. going to the Apocalypse meeting, camp meeting, when I didn't even go to the camp meeting that year. I went to this conference camp meeting. But all he is can shake hands with the Pope and not be questioned. But you know what, Pastor? Go ahead. Um, recently, uh, there was, there's a, vi there's a video because video, they're doing the annual uh, mm -hmm. council, council thing. Mm -hmm. And he did a video explaining why they do what they do. And, of course, it's still compromised. I'll just, I just be clear. Mm -hmm. All right. But I didn't know because uh, I knew Burt B. Beach was doing it before mm -hmm. he did. Mm -hmm. Right. But I didn't know that they've been doing this un they've been all doing the way this to the 1950s. Time. Oh, yeah. Right. And in the 1950s, we know what was going on. That was mm -hmm. an evangelical crisis mm -hmm. with Barnhouse and Martin. Right. And mm -hmm. uh, Bar no, Martin, Walter Martin was going to write a book mm -hmm. calling Seven Day Adventists a cult. Right. And so our leaders. Take it off the screen, brother. Our leaders, they said, you know, they talked with our leaders or whatnot. And we kind of watered down our various beliefs. We watered it down, in right. order to keep them from calling us That's a, a cult. cult. So basically, what he's saying is in that video that uh, that was uh, that was put out that you know we want to be looked at as a genuine Christian church. We want everybody to see us as a genuine Christian church, and we are a genuine Christian. We church, are a genuine Christian and we're not church. We're not a cult. We're not a, definitely not a cult. We need to be more concerned about what God thinks That's about right. us. That's right. And That's following right. the message that God has given us to preach and to teach. Right. And not try to please men and try to prove that guess we're, what? we're not a cult. They still calling us a cult. They're still, call still calling us a cult. I want to make a clarification. Okay, DEI. When I talk about diversity, inclusion, and in, in, diversity, equity, inclusion was originally meant for women equality and racial equality. But what happens is I do support that. Not meaning not the not the sinful stuff of it. Okay, I believe that everybody should be treated as an equal. Am I right, somebody? All right. But what happened was the LGBT attached themselves to that movement, which was good in its place. So when they sweep away the DEI, getting the, the, the homosexuality movement out, I'm in favor of them eliminating those LGBT-friendly programs. Mm -hmm. Amen. I'm, I mean, that's what I'm saying, because just to clarify it, I'm in favor of them eliminating those programs to support LGBT, because we don't believe in that. That's mm -hmm. against the God. But what happens is, the sad thing is our rights as blacks, even other minority groups, are being swept away all in one stroke. Mm -hmm. Okay, I hope that made that clear. All right, go ahead. Yes, and so what happens is this right here. Um, we can't be involved in the ecumenical movement. Nope. It is dangerous. Now, Ellen White does say we should put ourselves in the best light before the people, but what happens is this right here. It's interesting, and I hope if somebody ever brings this up to me that, well, you went to this camp meeting, you went to this place, I'm just going to say, if our leaders can shake hands with the man of sin, <laughs> and y'all give him a pass, y'all better leave me alone. Do you understand this, right? Y'all see me here, we paying, we, we sending time to, the, if I really wanted to be crazy, I would do a better job than, but like I said, but you know, the person, they didn't want to get me, they didn't, didn't want me to get hired in that position anyway, so you just threw that in there just as a devil's advocate, but mm -hmm. that's okay. But what happens is this right here, we're going to have to stay away as far, now does that mean, we, we got to come close to people, am I right somebody? Amen. We got to reach them with the gospel, do you understand this? I teach a class at Oakwood where um, we show what other religions, they, they, they do a research paper on what other religions believe and showing how we can reach them because you got to reach them with similarities. Yes. Do you understand this? With a Muslim, a seven day event is most likely could reach a Muslim better than a regular Christian, than a traditional Christian because we don't believe in eating speed. We believe in the headship of the man, amen, right. for the most part. So we can come with them and give them Christ. Right. Mm -hmm. And by the grace of God, there will be those that will come over. But that's one thing. But when I'm shaking hands, I got one Muslim priest on one side, and we all brothers and stuff like that. No, no, we're no, no. Same hymn. We're singing from the same hymn, saying the same prayers. They praying to Allah, and I'm bound my head like it's okay and stuff like that. <laughs> that gives a wrong look. Do you understand this? Yep. And, you know, it's just interesting how... Some people can get away with certain things, but I get questioned for putting a billboard up. Mercy. Wow. Isn't that terrible, Brett Daphne? Mm -hmm. Yes. So, <laughs> <laughs> so um, we see here uh, the patriarch of the West, right? Yes. Um, 
I believe he is so comfort comfortable and so well confident that he has the support of all religions. Yes. Including some that he really doesn't, but it seems on pictures as you pulled it up, it seems like he also has the support of those that are actually against his way of not of worship. So that's why he he feels so comfortable and stable that he has actually reunited all the churches back to one. Um, he is aware that everything goes about worship. All right, worship. Now, if you shake hands with me, or if you accept it on your front head, if you shake hands with me, if you shake hands with me, or you have the mark on your forehead, that means you're with me. Mm. If you shake hands with me, all right? So, so I believe that he is right on his way. And the next thing is I, I, I don't believe in equality. I believe that everybody is special in their own way. Because the moment you start with equality, you get into a, a maze of situations. Mm -hmm. And I believe that we should respect everybody for the uniqueness that they have. Mm. Whether you're male or female, you know, you are unique in your own way. Well, our roles are complementary. We're equals by creation, by but our know. roles are complementary. Right. Amen. Sister, da Sister Daphne, did my, you had a hand up? Okay. Sis oh, Brother Colange and then Sister Daphne. Yes, I look at uh, the word uh, patriarchy mm -hmm. and very strange. Uh, although it's coming from Wikipedia, if we can put it on the screen. What is it? Uh, it says... Uh, Patriarchy? Uh, yes. Patriarchy. Uh, that's uh, the title uh, the Pope just uh, reinstated for himself. Okay. It is a system yes. of society. Let's go to the screen. What does patriarchy mean? Yes. It says, a system or society or government in which the father or the eldest male is the head of the family and descent is traced through the male line. And that, that's biblical because you really read the Bible... Right. It's called patriarchs and prop, right? What happens is it starts with the man because the man is what determines the sex of the child. And number two, the man was created to be the head of the home and the family. Go ahead. Put, put the microphone. Microphone. Wikipedia? Uh-oh. You, you about to drop a bomb on me, brother? It says patriarchy is a social system in which positions of dominance and privilege are held by men. That's kind of a strong... Is that what you want me to read? Uh-oh. Uh-oh. Patriarchy literally means rule of the father. No. Right? Okay. okay. Take it off the screen. I, I'm sorry. Look for Pentarchy. What? Pentarchy. P-E-N... P... P-E-N-T-A-R-C-H-Y. P-E-N? Pentarchy. That's where, that's where the system comes from. Pentarchy. Yes. I never heard that word okay, before. I didn't know it until you mentioned it. Pentarchy? Yes. Where five groups of countries or districts with each ruler or government? Keep, keep reading. Okay. It can also refer to a government by five rulers or union or association of five kingdoms or provinces, which each ruler. Yes. Is that it? Keep going, keep going. Next, it comes from the one. Greek word pentarchia, which means five leaders. Pentarchia. Oh, in the Roman Empire? All right, the Pentarchy is a model of church organization established by Emperor Justinian I, where the Christian church is governed by the heads of the Roman Empire. Five major Episcopal sees, Rome, Constantinople, Alexandria, Antioch, and Jerusalem. Man, it's over, man. It's over. It go right back to Rome, man. I, remember, all roads lead to who? Rome. This is serious. Now, let's go to this article. This, this right here. Let's go, this is gonna, let's go to this article. It says... That the Protestants feel connected to the Pope. And listen to what these so called Protestants said. First of all, I'm conveyed the greetings of the Lutheran Christians from Germany to the Pope, and I thank them for the fact that many feel connected to him. Mm. Boy, Martin Luther will be rolling in his grave. Uh, in this great and committed commitment to the preservation of creation and for the climate justice, I also mentioned that it is currently very important for us as Christians all over the world that it unites us to work for what peace when they shall say peace and what Safety. 
I think the climate change movement may be the movement to bring this on. I was able to tell him how important it is for Christians, especially in our country, to the Lutheran believers, but also to our older brothers and sisters that we continue to make further progress and steps towards unity with one another. As discussions serve to ensure that things continue to move forward and every conversation is a good step, which means we have good conversations with each other, we exchange ideas, we all hope there will always be a deeper understanding of each other and even greater community and also signs of visible unity. Man, these products, these are, are they Protestants, Brother Mason? No. They're not. No. They are apostate Protestants. Right. And guess what? Remember? Remember this, y'all. I'm going to share this with y'all now. Look at this right here. Um, listen to this. Oh, I forgot to tell you. Did I show y'all this? Jesuits and evangelicals went with the U.S. lawmakers to, to promote Laudato Si. Hmm. The Jesuits, the Jesuits, y'all, last month met with evangelicals, met with Congress lawmakers to promote the Laudato Si document. It's over, y'all. I told you it was going to happen, and it's happening right before our eyes. Hmm. Take it off the screen. Yeah, exactly. Take it off the screen, Brother Richard. Did you see that? What you want to say, Brother Mason? That, 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 wow. Wow. Jesuits and evangelicals. Mm. The Dato C is a paper it's or an encyclical, how, whatever you want to call it, whatever from you want to call it. a church. And evangelicals and the Jesuits, that's a key, are now wanting to push that to be a part of the laws of the of the United States. Yeah. Church, hmm. Church and state, y'all. That's that's coming together, working together. It's coming together. So brothers and sisters, what must we do? Somebody says, Dr. O, oh, must what must we do? What are we let's go let's go to the screen. I'm going to tell you what we must do. We must start giving out the third angel's message. Now, for those of us Watching the billboards, this is our newest billboard. I got so many billboards, I just, we just signed a contract for like three more. Um, we have a billboard in Kennesaw, Georgia, which is in the Atlanta area. Did you know that the Mark of the Beast will be worshiped on Sunday? People need to see this. And we need to get this one now. The one in Cookville is not up no more, but we thank God. Look at these people liking it. Amen. Amen. And no, we're not taking that billboard down in um, Wilmington, North Carolina. And the person that called me and told me to take it down, the answer is no, we're not going to take it down. They we're not. You to do that? Somebody called me and to told me to do it. They said, we are, we as such and such SDA church are telling you to take that billboard down. Mercy. Brothers and sisters, why? Yes. And I, t I had to throw the Constitution on her. Look at this. Why, they, why should we take down billboards when they got, bill, they got news articles talking about we need to have a day of rest to fight climate change? Why should we take billboards down when I know that Satan's going to come to the United Nations and tell the whole world to keep Sunday? Look at that. That's, is that really Jesus? No. And understand this. Sunday, Sunday is the what Sabbath? Papal Sabbath. Papal Sabbath. It is the what? Pagan Sabbath. What else? It's more than papal. It's satanic. satanic Why y'all yeah. sound so quiet? Come on. Now. It's Luciferian. Mm -hmm. It's the devil's Sabbath. It's Halloween, the devil's day? Absolutely. Then guess what? I got something worse than Halloween. <laughs> Sunday worship, Sunday brothers. Worship. It's the devil's day. And that's why we are not ashamed to get these billboards out. I want to thank my brother right here. Send us a donation. If you need Project Ladder Rain Ministries to put a billboard up, let me know and we'll get it up. Pray. Isn't that beautiful? Oh, it was quiet in here. Well, Amen. guess what? That's a beautiful billboard. It's beautiful. Is it perfect? No. People say, well, you should say, people, people, people rather than just say, thank God is up, people still got criticism. What are they doing? What are they doing? Look at this. Look mm -hmm. at this. We have a new billboard up. And what, where do you think that is? Where do you think that is? Some city. Somebody said New York. No, it's no way. It's, no, it's in Idaho. This is in Idaho. Watch this, y'all. Look at this. This was sent to me by one of our supporters. This is in Lewiston, Idaho. Look at that. Look at that. <laughs> Hallelujah. Somebody gets a chance to see the truth. Somebody gets a chance to see the present truth. Do you understand this? But I got some news for you. Do you know on this billboard, every, I was told that everybody else's billboard gets hit all the time. Mine's is the slowest one that comes up. Wow. 
the devil don't want people to see it. Mm. Do you know everybody, everybody? Because you know this is a digital billboard, so you so every so 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 seconds or so often new billboards mm -hmm. come up. Mine comes up for eight seconds, and then one guy said it didn't come up for another, for fifteen minutes. Wow. Now in other places, is I never had that problem. Why would that happen? And I paid the money for it because the devil don't want people to see it. Mm -hmm. So he'll just, so what happens is I was told by the person that sent me this video that on this billboard, everybody else's billboard comes up multiple times, but mine comes up the least. Mm. Brother wow. Cologne, you think that's a conspiracy? You think that's a coincidence? The devil, see, let me tell you this right here. This stuff is hot now. The devil don't want people to see it. But you know what I believe? I believe that the right person at the right time will see it. Will see it. Mm -hmm. Even if it came up one time. And Father in heaven made the right people see this billboard in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. What you want to say, Daphne? Take it off the screen, my brother. Um, I had just wanted to touch on the word patriarch. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. When we look at the Bible for its definition, it was usually the firstborn male. Mm. But it was about leading the family it was a religious leader leading the family to god right if they weren't willing to do that they were passed over and another person was given that role mm. so when he's talking about being the patriarch of the west what is he really talking about being the religious leader of everyone and leading them in the direction that he so called sees fit put it's it back on the screen brother richard put it back on the screen thank you very much Brothers and sisters, if there's anybody that wants to support our national billboard campaign, go to our two websites. You see our Zelle, our Cash App. Brothers and sisters, I just signed the contract for Columbia, Tennessee. Amen. 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 And Meridian, Mississippi. Amen. And we're now working, for those of you in the Raleigh area, somebody said, can you put one in Raleigh? We got one in Raleigh. Somebody said, can you put it in Spanish and Portuguese, Sister Daphne? In New Jersey, we are working with the New Jersey church right now to put some Sunday Law billboards up in New Jersey. You see the information there. Contact us. Donate. You can, this is serious when we pray, praise God for it. Mm. Now, before we go any further, let's do a, a little, I want to do a, take a little um, sidestep. And we want to take you to a recent development. I got some good news for you. Um, we have a video called Pastor Balak Speaks. And we want to let you know that Pastor Balak, thank you for your prayers for him last week. He looked as good as dead, didn't he? Yes, he did. He did. And that's him right there. Amen. But I got some good news for you. I have a video from last night. All right, we want to wish everybody good evening and happy Sabbath. I'm here in Huntsville, Alabama. And we want to um, give you the latest update. And we have Pastor Balak. What you want to say, brother? You can't keep a good man down. <laughs> I'm back. Hey, Amen. I'm back. So the devil has been me on guard because I'm back. Amen. God bless you all. Thank you for all your prayers. I know you can't hardly hear him that well, but thank you so much. Amen. Sister Bale, like anything you want to say to the people yeah, of God? I just want to give the, the saints of God around the world just thank you. Because I've seen God work miracle right in front of my eyes. And as my husband, he doesn't know what's going right. on throughout the time. But I give him the praises, I give him the glory, because I was there through all the time. And when he come back, because at one time he didn't know me, and he was there, we see different so, colors. Nurses know what I'm talking about. But one thing I'm giving it the thanks, because when I cry out to God, I ask God that the work is plenty. Yes. Give him some more years that the both of us are on the battlefield. Yes, just for our Lord. Amen. So this time I, I expected God to do more and beyond because this is the body. He can depend on us to do His work. 
Amen. And so Pastor Bay, like David Holmes from Oakwood, say he's praying. Yeah. Continue. Don't stop praying. Yes. Amen. So, brothers and sisters, the Lord has is raising up Brother Balak. Amen. Amen. One day at a time. We thank God. Now, I got some good news for you. Now, we are told that soon there will be no work done in ministerial lines, but what kind of work? Medical, Medical missionary. missionary work. We want everybody on the screen to look. On Sunday, I want you to mark this in your calendar, Labor Day weekend, Sunday. May 26, 2024, from 8.30 a.m. to 5.30 p.m. at Stateline SDA, we're going to have a one-day miracle health session. Amen? Amen? And all are invited. Now, for those of you that are on the screen watching, if you want to come in from out of town, we want you to register at our website or on projectladderain at gmail.com. Learn how to empower your health for disease reversal and prevention. Prayer for the sick will be offered, and then plant-based meals will be served. And attendance is what, somebody? Free. Free. We got people coming from all over the country, and we want to get a head count. And we are happy to tell you that our featured speaker will be none other than Elder Maimon Wilson. Now, myself and Brother Larry will be giving presentations, but we're going to give my dear brother time to speak to us. And the theme for our session will be cooperating with divine power by utilizing principles of self-care. And for those of you that want to know where can you fly into, if you're coming from out of town, you can fly to Huntsville International Airport, Nashville International Airport. You can get your hotels in any part of the Huntsville metropolitan area. And our schedule, we begin at 830 a.m. on time introduction then we're going to do a miracle walk lecture one break prayer for the sick prayer for the sick again then we're going to have a big fat lunch and then in the afternoon we're going to do a miracle walk then we're going to do some lecturing prayer for the sick and a light supper and we're going to have uh i'm going to ask sister burton and sister um palmer to talk about women's issues and do some hydrotherapy uh, um, um demonstrations we're going to have a full day and brothers and sisters we want to let you know we're going to talk about cooperation with divine power and come to state line on what day somebody may 20th, may 20th. how many y'all here want to come for the whole day all right but we need y'all to come from the beginning to the end and we're going to show you how to get cured take it off the screen my dear brother take it off the screen brother richard and we thank god for that brothers and sisters we want to have a we're going to have a wonderful time at state line we want to always continue to provide true field presentations so we can have a people prepare for heaven Amen. any words you want to say before we close uh, three words get ready Get ready. Get ready. Y'all, this thing is real. And we, we, as we talk about it, we just need to have in our minds, what are we going to do? As for me and my house, we, we are going to Lord. serve the Lord. Amen. Amen. Pastor Davis, any, let's, let's, any, Pastor Davis, anything you want to say? Yes, especially in light of that, uh, that uh, comment in that video uh, concerning seven dad Venice and the climate change. I want to say that the time right now, we may not be too much in notice, but the Spirit of Prophecy tells us that very soon that Seventh-day Adventists will be put to the forefront. Right. Mm -hmm. And so we're going to be put in notice very soon. And so it's very important for us to study, to make sure we're rooted and grounded in Christ, mm -hmm. uh, to live this truth as we heard in this morning's message so that we can be ready to give an answer for the hope that is in us with meekness and with fear. Amen. So brothers and sisters, we have a lot of work. And somebody is saying, where are you going to be at? For those of you in West Palm Beach, I'm going to be in West Palm Beach on the second Sabbath in, at, the, at the Acreage Seventh-day Adventist Church on the second Sabbath of next month. For those of you that are watching in Pensacola, Florida, I'll be at Jordan Street Seventh-day Adventist Church for the Sunday Law Update next week. Amen. For those of you that are in Pensacola, Florida area, Come on down. We're going to have a good time at the Jordan Street Seventh-day Adventist Church next week. My good friend, Dr. Pastor Dewan Knight, has invited us, and we're going to come down there. We're going to be in West Palm Beach um, um, in, in um, Second Sabbath, and then we're going to be in Puerto Rico for break. I won't be preaching. All right. Amen. But what happens is we're going to come back, and then what do we got? Well, we got to bring his brother back. Amen. Do we need to bring him back? 
Uh, if you water it down, you can't come back no more, right? But talk about Apocalypse Camp Meeting. Uh, so this year, we're doing a camp meeting at the Ministry Media Center right here in Pulaski. July 17 through 20 is, uh, we're calling the Apocalypse Ministries Camp Meeting. And so we will be doing classes and presentations on preparing to see Jesus in peace, asking the question, do you know him? And so that is the theme. Do you know him for yourself? And so we're doing it the first time we've done it at the ministry center. And most people have been telling me that's what the building was built for. Right. And so we're going to occupy it for, from a Wednesday through Sabbath. If you want to register, if you want to come, go to the, the ministry's website, apocalypseministries.org, and click register. All the information is there. Amen. So if you want to go to Apocalypse Ministry, um, it's in Pulaski, Tennessee. We want you to come. I'm going to be there during the week. But brothers and sisters, and for those of you in the Miami, Florida area, my good friend, Pastor Reuben Joseph, that boy is on fire, man. Woo, I tell you, we're going to be at his church. I forgot the name of it. We'll be, we'll be in Miami in June, and I can't wait. But guess what's going to happen next week? We got Dr. Philip Simon coming to talk about prayer. Amen. So a church that prays together will do what, somebody? Stay together. Well, brothers and sisters, as, as I say, you know, this is the part I hate the most, Pastor, when we got the goal. Brother, we, I wish we can do this for four hours. You know, I've seen Alex Jones do four hours. He does that every day for four hours because there's so much stuff going on. But brothers and sisters, I promise you, we're going to come back again. Would you come back? But you know what? What happens to, if two weeks from now a Sunday bill comes? then it's got all the stuff that we've been talking about. You're going to see it come to pass. But if you are right with Christ today, you are ready if he should come today. Our assurance is in one man, and his name is who? Jesus says that if I have engraven you upon the palm of my hand, and no man shall be able to take you out of my hand. So don't allow these things to scare you, but may it compel you to be prepared to meet the lovely Jesus in peace. And we want to let you know, can we bring Jan Marcuson back? Yes. Were you here when, yeah, he came and, and Pastor Marcuson wants to do Sunday Law updates with me all over the country now. And if there's anybody around the country want to sponsor us for a Sunday Law update with myself and Jan Marcuson, let us know and we'll come. But in the meanwhile, every Sabbath at State Line, we promise you one thing we're going to give you. And that is the what testimony? Straight testimony. Amen. Every Sabbath, straight testimony today, straight testimony tomorrow, straight testimony forever at State Line SDA. Amen. Praise the name of the Lord. Let's kneel for a word of prayer. Father in heaven, we come before you in prayer. We want to ask you, Lord, that you would bless the work at State Line, bless Apocalypse Ministries. Bless um, Pastor Davis's ministry and bless the other ministries that are going on here. We want to pray that you would fill this church up with non-Adventists, Lord God. And we pray for the non-Adventists online, but people will start joining the seven-day Adventist church and, be, and, and becoming 11th hour workers. We want to ask that you would bring the 11th hour workers, Lord, right now, Lord. And prepare us all to be ready, Lord. May we as a church and we as a viewing audience be ready. But what is soon to break upon this world is an overwhelming surprise. Bless us, Lord God, as we continue on. Bless our going in and bless our going out. Thank you for Marcus Mason and Apocalypse Ministries for being a blessing. This we ask, Lord, in Jesus' name. Amen and amen. God bless you. See you next time for another Sunday Law Update. Amen.